California is that far away. It's almost the same distance. Sorry. Fuck. What's up with my mic stand? I think it's time for a new mic stand. This is fuck. Sorry, guys. Not you, $20 mic stand. It took me forever to find one that was decent. It was a cheap one. I had other ones that were more, and they did not work as well. This is... Holy fuck. I think I broke this fucker. That sucks. That is crazy shit, right? Amateur StarCraft League thing. Oh, the Masters Cup? So, OSC first, the online sports championship, used to be the Oceanic StarCraft Championship, or Oceanic Sports Championship. Um, it's based out of Australia, but yeah, it's actually Pro League stuff. This uh, Masters Cup is like a $600 open. It opens, they have open qualifiers, and then there's an invitational. Um, so, we actually have some good players in this. Uh, some people didn't want to play, like, for after the closed. Uh, Eddie, who's one of the lead guys in the organization. <clears throat> like, uh, Roddy, or sorry, Wardy, myself, Chicken Man, the Cranky Ducklings. Uh, some teams are all partners of OSC. And there's they have tons of events, so you guys should check them out. Uh, here are the links. Uh, but it, there's been tournaments forever. Pig was the first champion of it. But they've had everybody. I think Clem, Agumi Ho, Max Pax, Geralt. There's been lots of champions. Cure. Yeah, definitely good stuff. Guys, I'm going to grab some caffeine because I need to. I was debating getting some beers, but I had some last night, and it's a work week. You know how that be. little coca-cola you saw a cat you want to see my kitty charlie i can grab my cat quick first today's casual whatever so one of two cats this is one of two cats you're forced to show your kitty. This is Charlie. He's a big old chunk. He is, but he's awfully cute, huh? He's really cute. He's a good boy. Charlie. He's the nicest cat going. He's has huge claws. The chunk and hit. And the other cat's a fluff. Yes, glad you guys like him. <laughs> yes. He's a big old chonker. All right, guys. We're getting into it. Yep, I have another one, too. Mitters. Oh, she just came. All right, I can show you again. Yeah, she, that's uh, her. She's a little gray fluff. You can't really make her out right now, but yep, that's her. Mitters. Spawning in the upper left-hand corner. In the blue, representing Twisted Minds, it is Nicoract. And his opponent in the bottom right. In the red, give it up for Kramke's Hamano. Yes, I would grab her too. She's like she's really nice in ways to me, but she's more skiddy and gets afraid, like startled easy. So that be that. What do we got this game? No proxy racks yet. Uh, Han Mono. Choosing red, by the way. That'll point it up. Looks like he is going to... You know, do we get an in-base two racks reaper? That's what I'm wondering. I don't think so, but we might. Kind of a aggressive slash defensive position. I think more... I don't understand Han Mono is not walling. Yeah, dude. I know it's late for you guys. Good to see you. All right, anyway, here we go. SCV is going for a little scouterino from Nicarak. Tanamano not doing any scouting with his SCV. I think he's just going for a straight Reaper scout, which could be a little bit of a disaster. Reaper immediately going for both of them. 
Actually, Han Mono is like a second before, but it's not going to matter. It's got to cross the map. Nicarak going to scout this. Then it is pretty standard, just a double gas opener for both going into factory. 1 a.m., yeah, yeah. It do be late for you guys. And guys, I'm so tired. I actually said it's a work week. What I meant is it's a, a weekday, a work day. Ay, ay, ay. Guys, Saturday, how about this bullshit? I can't even believe I volunteered for this. All right, anyway, we got a little Reaper fight first. Grenade lands. Seems like it's okay for both of them. Nicarak didn't want to engage that. He hid in the bushes like some cr kind of creepy stalker. Look at Nicarak being a little creepy creep. All right, it's going to be Reapers and Hellions for both of them for a start. Just going for a CC. <laughs> Still get up to witness the end game? Yeah, probably. Uh... Well, maybe the last one, but I don't think it's going to be that long. But we have, like, uh, Bion versus Young Yakov. Um, I'm trying to remember. Mana's playing somebody. We got Christiana. We, yeah, it's a mix of people. So we got some really good players. We got, obviously, you guys know Bion and Young Yakov and Christiana and Forjumicus. Yeah, it's a pretty good, like, it's, it's cool. It's a $600 tournament, and these days, that's more than an EPT. Or a KSL weekly. Um, but I was surprised some of the guys didn't uh, choose to play in it. But we have some after this. The thing is, these were played from replay, or I'm casting from replay, and even though they're a bit, I'm a bit behind, they've never been shown publicly, so, like, Kind of like when Roddy was saying that before, nobody's seen these matches other than the players. So that's the beauty of it. So we don't even report the scores until they're casted. All right, what do we got coming up here? Nice little tank. Oh, Marine Tank Medivac. It's going for a uh, Marine Tank drop, I'm guessing. Which those could be fun. Right, Going to be in a Banshee from Nicarak this time. Another rack's coming down. Good to see you guys, though. I would love to fucking have a beer and uh, get a picture and a hug with either of you guys or any of you guys. What up, Judgment? It's just the way I am, you know? I like hanging with the homies. kind of want to... If I didn't have work tomorrow, I'd drink it. No, I would still sleep. Right now, I just want to be sleeping in my bed. Yeah, for sure. For me to go to Europe would be like a big... It's one of my... Like, it's been one of my dreams to go to Europe, even in general. So, the fact that I got into StarCraft and stuff makes it all the better. But I'd probably be a trip with my girlfriend. But she doesn't want to be on camera and stuff. Like, she doesn't mind meeting people. But that would be tricky if we went to Home Story Cup. Or even going to visit Roddy's shit. <laughs> Imagine that. My girlfriend's like, fuck that. You have three more hours. What kind of job? Aren't you a developer? What kind of horse shit kind of schedules that, Judgment? Shouldn't you be like, I can knock out my work and then just fucking call it? Sounds like a rough job. For sure. For sure, Pi. Alrighty. Server migration? Oh yeah, you're doing network back end stuff oh my god look at this it's a disaster on both sides but it's just reapers and hellions on this side han mono not repairing his tank he's too busy being aggressive han mono oh nah, he's not gonna lose that he just needs to land vikings honestly no, never mind no gg han mono takes it into one all right guys let's help me get back let me let me help let's help me get awake here for those of you that are sleepy in bed in europe i apologize for this but I don't have the browser source on here, so you can't see the Imagine pictures, but Protoss. no pictures popping up of Dave artwork, but we're going to do this stuff. Good. Good. Let the hate All right. flow through a name of you. So I don't have to do these in, a, in a, uh, order. Han Mano took that one. 
We got the following matches. I'll let you guys choose. I just need to remember. We have Chris, uh, Christianer versus Spotsy Boy. Han Mato versus Ashbringer. <clears throat> Geralt versus Eric Fire. And we have Bion versus Young Yakov. And then I have even more stuff, if not to. Should I just go down the line? I'm thinking we're going to go down the line. We're going to go Christianer versus Spots. This could go either way. It's PvP. Why do they have Korean in their map name? They both have play on Korean. This is not... This is certainly not Polish or German, but anyway. We're going on hard lead to start things off. All right, spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of hard lead in the blue, representing Berserker. Give it up for Spotsy Boy for my home team of Berserker. His opponent in the upper left, representing Blazer. Give it up for our red Polish Protoss. It is Christiana. <laughs> as long as we have Dave in StarCraft 2, the world will be right. Eh. You know, you can't have one without the other, I guess, huh? <laughs> I'm not going to lie, even with StarCraft, I am feeling the effects of being immortal right now. And but immortal, as we all are. And uh, funny enough, as we get into this, looks to be a double gate expand from both, or at least a double gate opener. One could do a little proxy robo, proxy Stargate, or just in-base Stargate. We'll see if it's a little more aggressive or not. I think we're going to see a macro game myself in game number one. But yeah, two-gate opener from both of them. And yup, yup. Interesting wall, mate. What the hell is he doing? Christian, are you mad, man? Why on earth is he walling like this, guys? It's not a wall. He has to drop, like, a pylon and a battery to... What the fuck? Christianer is infinitely better than me, guys. But I think he took walling lessons from my man, Hero. You know what I'm saying? Christianer doesn't care about the wall, which you should if you're doing something cheeky. He looks like he is going for a proxy Stargate. Spots going for possibly... If this is a proxy robo, that's damn far. What is a wall? Nah, they had a phone. He had a phone call. It's his young girlfriend. All right, Stargate going down. Oh yeah, yeah. The Jugger Jason wall. Jugger J. All right, double adept opener for spots. Christiana has a Stargate in the corner of the map. And. uh... Ah, oh, they both have two adepts. Spots has got to be loving this. Ah, look at this. He's looking for the probe. He is going to find the probe. Does he get the kill? Does get the kill. Spots, uh... Well, he's going to go around his proxy. Okay, that's how he's going to walk. Still, I don't really like this. He's got a... It's like an extra pylon, mate. What are you doing? Okay, War Prism is coming up for Spots. It's not even a three gate. It's two gate robo. What are you doing, man? This guy's an animal. All right, so it still walls off. Is this an English ba uh, speaker cast? Am I sp uh, saying it correctly? I've covered spots a lot. And uh, who helped me? Who helped me with that was I, A, I watch a lot of StarCraft and B. Uh, it's because of uh, Chicken Man. Because Chicken Man used to cover a lot, but I've I've covered a hell of a lot of spots over the last couple of years. He's a really good player. I was actually proud of him, too. I didn't talk to my own team enough from uh, probably NA bias from the times. like, And I like forget I'm on teams with some of the guys. Like when I was in the EU, I did the EU uh, closed and open qualifiers. Um, not open. I just, eh, sorry, I just did the closed. 
uh, because I had planned Saturday and I couldn't do Friday because I'm at work. I did the American open, both American opens, and uh, the European and American closed. Sick games, by the way. Um, if any, if you guys didn't see in Europe, and those of you, any of you, if you didn't see the the M canning run, especially, it's crazy. A lot of huge upsets, though. Vindicta retiring now. Um, but the can man qualified. He proxy void raid. Okay, let's talk about the game here, though. Talking about everything else because I'm tired. All right, that being said, Pilot is going to be depowered here from one side of it. Okay, and he has a little bit of chance of production before that pylon goes down, but it looks like it is going to be a point of interest from our blue Protoss man. Oracle's coming down, not able to do anything for the moment. Malus wouldn't have hated a Void Ray being made and recalled, but he does no uh, energy. One Big Daddy Immortal in the center, but there's two on the other side of it. Battery overcharge is not... Well, it would be available, but it's in an awkward spot. I don't know, Christian. Our spots might be doing this guy. I don't know. I'm not really sure. The two oracles are out and not really do. Okay, never mind. The two stalkers are there. I think he lost an oracle. Let's take a look. If he lost an oracle, he did lose an oracle. So this is a bit of a disaster for our red Rodos player. He is technically mining more spots. Is just on 13 workers. This is a weird one. Yeah, erect some of it. Let's take a look at the graphs. Now, these guys always forget the damn. See, it's the thing when you do tournaments with no admins around. They always forget to use fucking Observer Plus Plus or WCS. Like, nine out of ten times. If the uh, if the players run amok, they, like, never remember it. So, alas, we have problems. Christiana built a robo. I'm telling you. With three, imagine if you build one Void Ray in the corner of the map. Just imagine, one Void Ray in the corner of the map would have made a huge difference in all of it. The Oracles did the work, but at the end of the day, he would be able to, like, there's few Stalkers. A Void Ray just wins this. You can kill the Immortals, you can kill the Warp Prism, you can kill the Warp Prism with Immortals in it. Rocking that diamond player life. Hey, I'm, listen, I know how that feels all too well, man. Jesus Christ, I think I got a world record for being diamond one every season and dropping the D2. Hello? Almost get masters, then like never get masters. It's fucking embarrassing, man. All right, anyway, so I can relate. Christian or only needed to build one fucking void rate. Come on, brother. I'm... It's just, it's frustrating. It's actually frustrating. Oh, man. Speaking of frustrating, Spots is like, fuck. I can't get out of here, mate. The Oracle uh, Pulsar beaming down. Okay, not Stalkers. You don't want to do that, mate. There we go. Phoenix. Okay, Phoenixes. I like Phoenixes, but I'm telling you, one Void Ray. This is, if any time there's a case for a meme ray, it'd be right now. Gold League. A dream, you can get it. You just need the time to play the games, man. And you need to spend time with Yeti. Uh, judgment. Hell, you could probably spend time with me at, at your rank. I've helped people get... I've helped people in all races get into Diamond League. Hell, I've helped people in Diamond League for the first time in Platinum get to higher than me. And now they're like Grandmasters. Because they're young. <laughs> anyway, Phoenixes are going to be a little helpful here. The Immortals are going to try to duke it out. Warp Prism is out, but there's three. Oh, my God. This is actually going pretty good for... This is going very good for Christianer, even though he's lost all of his Immortals. He's trying to build another one behind it. Immortal getting kind of tickled at here, but another Phoenix means it's going to be one dead Immortal. Another Immortal comes out for old Spotsy boy, who's back to enough minerals to be oversaturated technically because the base is mining out. It's kind of some fucked up mining over here from Christiana, but we'll take it. Phoenixes coming back are kind of nice. Another Warp Prism coming out for Spots. This game is hella weird. Speaking of Gold League, I feel like we're witnessing something that we would see. I don't even know. This looks more like 
All right, these guys are obviously both good European Grandmaster Protoss, but some of the stuff that's happening is truthfully reminding me of what I would see on Diamond NA Ladder. And I'm not even joking. This is some weird shit. It's PvP, though. We're used to it. Why weren't we making more Phoenixes, sir? Like, Phoenix Immortal. Phoenix Immortal. The Arati build, guys. Would be fantastic. The Protoss mech. Against the three gate row. How it played out. I feel like Christianer's throwing. I truly feel like Christianer's throwing here, guys. I mean, if you can get the War Prism again, that's something. But this is a lot of units. We're talking... Is it seven or eight stalkers? Seven stalkers. Thought it was seven. I just wasn't sure. So again, I'm really tired. But why? 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 Now the proxy stargate's gonna be scouted. Phoenix is going across the map and a lot of long distance mining here for Spotsy Boy, which is gonna be more than Christianer. Wait, what? Oh, okay. I, I was for a second I'm like, what is going on here? He's got the sentry. Now that he's got blank, I think Christianer's just dead, guys. Christianer looking very Omega dead. Does have the other battery. This is just too many units with the Blink Stalkers. There's one, two Big Daddy Immortals, one very injured. And the three Phoenixes on the other side just picking off some workers. Is it anything to write home about? Is it Jag? Christianer's a really good player, dude. He's just making some big mistakes. Jag? I think he's better than you are, though. <laughs> Just saying, you're pretty good. I'm pretty sure you can regularly take a game off of him. No, it is a jag. Dude, have a good night, Pi. And Lethal, if you're still awake, you get some sleep too. Lethal probably went wait the bed way ago. Giddy up. Thanks for the follow up, Pi, as well. Just a guy? Well, yeah. I don't know. I've seen Christiano take some pretty sick games off people. Um, but, you know. He, uh, he took some time off. It's because he's not... He stopped being a tryhard as much for a while. He's spending time with his girlfriend and having a life. So that's part of it. Yeah, that prism did almost die. Four immortals. At the same time, this is a tough thing. Why didn't he go into disruptors or something? I would have... Like, it sounds... Now that there's Blink, it wouldn't matter as much, but... Now he's just, he's just now building another Phoenix, and he threw away his Phoenix. No, he has the three Phoenix. All right, he's going to see the Nexus. He's gotten some workers here and there, but... At the end of it, the Phoenixes would be pretty good as an extra buffer as he get enough Immortals out. He is supply blocked. Spots is mining way more. He's going to be able to mine even more yet. Weird, weird game. All right, now we got a bunch of Blink Stalkers in four centuries. The War Prism and two Immortals. It is the Magnet of Rees. Rees. All right, anyway. War Prism's forced to recall because that's what Spots wants to do. Still. Spots has become a lot better of a player lately, too. I gotta say, he's in, that kid's improved a lot. This is a wild one, especially for a tired old man casting. <clears throat> Alright, Phoenix is picking up some of the stalkers. Yeah, he's gonna help with some of it. The War Prism, though, Chris Yonner has to be careful. He looks like he's in a very good spot after all. But at the end of the day, he almost threw. Spots, your income lead's not going to matter if you lose your whole army, mate. Is this three Zell? Oh, my God. Three Cope Zell. It's no shield battery, no pylon. <coughs> On the low ground because there was no money for it. An immortal going down. Guys, I think we're about to see the end of Spots. <coughs> Spots was so excited to get this low ground. But you know what? It's just going to get thundered down by immortals. And tickled by sentries. Another Phoenix coming out is pretty good for him as well. Gonna need, oh my god, the uh, sentries actually damaging the Phoenixes as well. Now lifting these won't do too much, mate. 
This is a banger. He loses the Nexus. This is like... Let's take a look at the trades. Normally, at this time of the game, the resources lost neither side would be good. Spatz gets upset. And when cheese is met by an even more Gouda cheese. You weren't kidding about it being confusing. Because you know what? I think we're all confused on that one. Uh, judgment. That was a very strange game. Anyway, Spots takes it. Or Chris Yonner takes it, rather. As we get into it, see what we get for game number two. Is one going to be a long one? Is this one going to be a short one? Is this one going to be a meme one? We'll find out. All right, here we are. Oops. On, uh, got to get this fixed. Spawning in the upper right-hand corner of Radhuset Station. In the blue, representing Berserker. In his spots. His opponent in the bottom left, representing Blazer. In the red, it is Christiana. Our Polish Protoss player. Against the German Pro Protoss player. Yeah. All right. Still getting my Coca-Cola in me. Bear with me, guys. ASMR stream. All right, this looks to be some cheese. Is this going to be a two-gay cannon rush or something? A baller move. He's uh oh, it's scouted. It's scouted. What is going on here? Hello, sir. And that was a really bold move to put it there because. By the time you make it there, if you saw, was actually an earlier scout for uh, Christianer. The spot's getting all like four Jumi over here. Do get cannon rush? Do we wall off? All right, he's dropping another pylon. Getting a scout. I think this is just shut down in a way. If he just puts a pylon down, there's going to be a low ground cannon, but still. You're really relying on all, the one probe for everything. Okay, two cannons go down. If he dropped the pylon here to block, that'd be a baller move if he has the money. And he does have the money. He's going to go for the two zealots. I almost feel like if he drops spots, drop the pylon, he is going to. That one pylon is going to provide high ground for these two. Not hitting too much, but still. Two adepts coming out. Ooh, the gateway is a baller move, though. Problem is, is this probe needs to stay alive. All right, good. He's going to pull the probe back. But the beauty part is the high ground pylon right there. Cyber... Cybercore going down. Double gas as well. Proxy pylon probably going to be a Stargate. It's got to be a Stargate. Two adepts are out to take care of the Zealots, but still. Oh, Christianer takes it in a greasy 2-0. What up, Yeti? That was greasy. Spots was pissed, dude. Hey, Yeti. I have to do it, though I don't have the the uh, graphics on this because I'm on a different scene for OSC. That's exactly what happened there. Christiana took spots down to Kirktown. All right. So what are we doing? Should I continue down? Because we got Hanmano versus Ashbringer, Jarral versus Eric Fire, and Bion versus Young Yakov. I think we're going to do Bion versus Young Yakov. Yeah, Yeti, I drank last night because Burke pissed me off so bad. I would have drank tonight if I didn't drink last night. I'm like, now I'm like, I set up my event for today and I'm pot committed, but I am fucking tired, dude. And guys. So let's get into Bion versus Young Yakov, leaving me with, I'm just going to make sure. Odd model, Ashbringer, Geralt, Aragfire. All right, I'm just going to have to keep track of this. Dude, Yeti, I got you. 
Yeti, the problem is on Friday, I have to get up at 6.30 in the morning on Saturday, so I don't know how Kirktown I'm going to be because I have to cast... Supposedly, Loco's going to cast some of it with me. He's like, I'm only going to cover like a few of the big player games, but... Anyway, yeah, if it's for that Cyan tournament, and then I have to work at noon on Friday, or Saturday, set noon and Saturday after a work week. Spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of Hard Lead, representing Shopify Rebellion in the blue, it is Beon. His opponent in the upper left, uh, from Twisted Minds in the red, it is Young Yakov. Little TVZ for you. Bian going for the two racks Reaper low ground. Young Yakov. What is he doing? He's going gas pool. Which could be good for him or good for Bian, depending on what he does. Depending on what happens, this could be perfectly fine for Bian. And on the map side, it's really not bad to do two racks Reaper on hard lead. If you're on the bottom. If you're spawning on the top, yeah, your shit could get exposed. On this side, no way. Alright, let's see what young Yakov's got for us. He's going for his hatchery. No scout from Bion yet. He's just going for his two racks reapers. He's going for aggression. That being said, I would assume this is a roach build. It usually is, but there's a lot of things you could do. As the Zorg. All right. Let's go. All right, we got some uh, little Reaperinos coming out. We all know that. It's going to be scouted by Young Yakov. He's going into gas, getting his first queen. His second hatch isn't done. He has one set of lings, and that's it. It's going to be easy for... Uh, Young Yakov to hold this, I don't think. Because he's supply blocked. It's waiting for that other overlord. We'll be able to start some more lings. The end going right into a reactor. Ooh, spicy. Yep, he's got a CC as a reactor. Funny thing is, I died to some stuff with pool first against the two racks Reaper opener. When I was playing Zerg, and I actually was going, I fucked up my cheese, but it almost was a build order counter. It should have been a build order counter for me. I made one little mistake, and it all spiraled out. All right. Eh, Ling's going to catch some value. Actually, Young Yakov's doing just fine. I like the Baneling Nest uh, because of what you're up against on this. I wouldn't have hated if you faked that Roach Warren. Now, that eats up a lot of your money, and it eats up a drone. But faking out a Roach Warren and canceling it after the Reapers go is like Giga Chad. That is just Giga Chad. All right. Lings and Banes, Mr. Young Yakov. So I'm feeling he's going to be very committed here. An old school Bane bust. These are slow Banes. And slow Banes are going to get hit. Like, this actually set up for Beyond is ridiculously good in so many ways, in my eyes. Banelings are going to catch a lot of this, but there's still more bio to come. And these Lings are going to be enough to chew through all the bio. They do get a decent amount, but Banelings not even going to finish. All right, and that reactor is even going to be repaired. It's a hold for Bion. He's still got his stem. He's got his combat shields going. Oh, down here. Just on three racks after. Young Yakov's, like, pretty committed to this. So if he doesn't get the damage, yeah. He's just going to GG. It's a hold from Bion. Not really anything too crazy there. All right, Bion versus Young Yakov. Game two, guys. Give me just a minute.
Well, I was muted. I just had to blow my nose. I keep blowing my nose on there. I'm like, that's rude. All right, anyway, going on to game two. The cheese was real, Professor Nuggy, in chat. But it wasn't enough. Beyond's Turax build was just too good. Young Yakov still remembered a GG. Oh, wait, why is my camera on? All right, anyway. Spawning in the upper left-hand corner of Golden Aura, up a point. From Shopify Rebellion, it is the one, the only, Beyond. His opponent in the bottom right, in the red, representing Twisted Minds. Our Zerg player, bringing us some cheese in game number one, which is kind of almost build order counter, but I almost feel like some of it was the, the Sim City and how the map was. It is Young Yakov, the red, who may be playing a standard... 16 hatch game this time. Let's take a look. Does he have anything rallied? Okay, he's going to pull one. 16 hatch. There you go. Once a month, Yeti. I'm sure you don't want to play more than that. I know you've done it in the past, but... I think you can play a little more than one game a month, mate. Ain't nothing wrong with playing some off-race for fun, too, though. I do it all the time. You have a whole list of shit you can get mad about that you're not mad about normally. <laughs> All right. Same opener from Beyon. Is Beyon just going to close it out fast, guys? That's the uh, the question. Yep. The add-on's on the wrong side. It's map-dependent stuff. Exactly. Actually, this is a full wall without it. So Beyon's going to have to make some decisions. He actually can fly a Rax after. Or two. And back up and just go with it. But it is going to be a two racks reaper opener at least. He might go into a 2 1 1 this time and change it up. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, it's sometimes it's you do it just because it's a uh, it's map dependent. I mean, you still have a wall, but yeah, you're so open to Ravagers and Banelings. Hell, even Ling sometimes if you're caught with your pants down. The young Yakov's not doing anything too aggressive. He's going for a standard three hatch play, and he's going to go take the six o'clock. Beyond, is he going to find it in time? Metabolic before hatch is pretty standard as well. Young Yakov will have the 300 minerals, but these drones are in. Oh my gosh, he's not going to be able to save the drone. He loses the drone, not like this. And it's only the first Reaper. You've seen Stim get denied? Yeah, but I mean, I've seen a lot of. There's been a lot of follow ups to it. I mean, hell, if Gumi Ho can play that game. Where he proxy two racks, he proxy three raxes, and then ends up into armory widow mine drops, into fucking double Thor drops. Anything's possible, you know. <laughs> and that was versus Ragnarok. Know what I'm saying? But pretty straightforward opener from uh, Young Yakov. Beyond not getting any techs. He's going 3cc, getting a factory. He's going for a 2 1 1, but like it's going to be really weird 2 1 1 for the timing. Just three Reapers. Beyond might be in some trouble. Okay, four Reapers. Four Reapers is a little different. He's going to be able to keep the pressure on. He actually could have been hitting this third base. He, I don't even think he scouted for it. He's picking off a few links here and there. Three trades are good trades. We'll always take those. Oh, yeah. I got to cast the replays. That's another thing. I had to make time for this. I started... Uh, it felt bad. I wasn't supporting, and I haven't had time to watch any of it because it's too late, and then work's been too busy. I'm going to sit up some time, too, for Dave GSL cast. And it sucks because I've been... State's been killing it from what I've been watching. Tasteless and State have been doing a good job together. I love me my arty boy, but it's, it's it's we could end up with far worse casters than my man State. And he's a hell of a guy too. But I'm really missing some of the games. Look, I looked at the results. I'm like, that's ah, all right. I can see the results. It's not gonna bother me. I watch enough Starcraft, but Scarlet taking down Maru. Anyway, that being said, the Reapers are getting cleaned up, and this is Beyond Reapers. Still, let's take a look at the trades. Actually. 
in favor of Young Yakov by a lot. The end did get a drone earlier, but I'd say in terms of resources, it didn't do much. That did not do much at all. BN going for double Z double eBay. Yeah, he's got enough uh, Marines here to just deal with it. Even if that's on the outside, he can always move, make another tech lab and move onward upstairs. It's 100% a 2 on 1, though. We're waiting for the two medevacs. Stim's going to complete BN setting up with this other gas. And he has money to start like combat shields or plus one in either case. Actually, he can probably he can do an upgrade in combat shields or 1-1. One, one. He's going to go for 1-1 one, one first. He knows he's going to have the money for it. Orbital Command Center is going to land in a third. But guess what? That Overlord's going to go down first. Looking okay for Bion. You got a fast third CC behind this. And his bio is going to be pruned proper with medevac support. Bion might get a free Overlord again. Kind of nice, too. And he's right on the Zerg's creep doorstep near Queens and Lings. Uh, I don't hate the double Evo for our Zerg player. He knows it's bio. He knows it's he knows it's a 2-1-1. One, one. I'm pretty sure of it. But does he? Isn't in position. Still, it's a lot of Zerglings forcing the Marines to lift off. Be unable to get damage over there for now. He's just hammering. Well, what is he hammering out? Upgrades mostly. Supply depots, building SCVs, building production. Not really pumping any units out. He's starting to get those tech labs up to where he can. Has one already here. The end going to try to get some work done over here. Doesn't lose a single Marine. So the trades he's getting are actually better than nothing. Fourth base going down at the uh, 6, 7 o'clock base. It's more like 7-ish. Um, if uh, 6 and 7 o'clock had a love child, it'd be this base. That's what I'm going to call it, guys. The love child of 6 and 7. Not six and nine, but six and seven. Our memes cannot be that fortunate. Only one Marine goes down, so Beyond is actually getting high value of these two medevacs and Marines. That being said, with one one finishing up, that's pretty good for him too. Wouldn't hate to see an armory. Oh, he does. Look at this. He already, look at Beyond. Already has the armory even. Uh, one Ling trying to get some damage. That's pretty comical to see though. The SCVs and the mule even in there. Or maybe to go down. Because re seven is a registered six offender. Okay, young Yakov with the sick fungal. That was actually a pretty smart move. That was, that was kind of crazy. I'm surprised that medevac survived, but pretty cool moves from young Yakov right there. Landed a nasty little fungal. Getting more infestors, going for Burl. I wouldn't hate a bailing nest before. I mean, he's going one one like he's knows he's against bio. Certainly warrants banelings. And faster is okay, but still feel like you need banelings. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah, the widow mines are landing too. This base looks like it's in trouble. Oh, widow mines aren't going to be able to engage, but this base is as good as dead. Beyond forced to stutter step back, but that's almost dead. Friendly fire from the widow mines actually helping out young yak off for a moment, but these widow mines are still here, burrowed and ready to just take out a bunch of lings and a queen. Oh man, fourth fourth CC going down for Beyond. Damn. Well, Beyond's already back. This base is 100% dying. Young Yakov didn't have the money to take another base behind it. It's times like these and timings of like these. Oh, unlucky an infester goes down to a widow mine as well. Nice fungal, but is it enough? I don't think so. He's gonna lose more. And more infestors. Infestors, does he land a fungal? Uh, a decent one, but the queens are going to move command, and Beyond's going to take it in a 2 0. Seven is a re registered six offender. That is too funny, Bitter Melon. Welcome, welcome. Oh, man, that was good. Good quality, quality memory, uh, memory all around. Oof. All right, guys. That being said, that was a good one. That was a short one. Um, we're going to go on to Han Mono versus Ashbringer. Uh, first, I have to call my girlfriend and say goodnight and all that stuff. I might make up a little cheeky coffee. I need a few minutes. We're going to get into Han Mono versus Ashbringer.
All right. I really don't want coffee because my ass wants to go to sleep, but I have to cast so. I can always split it up. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll be right back, guys. I'll put some other music on for you. Am I, or am I so sane that you just blew your mind? Eventista just subscribed. I got beer, ya yeah, ya. Yeah.
phone call made. Oh, Evan, thanks for the 23. You got beer? Nice. Well, maybe I'll actually take you up on some beer. I might have like a couple left. I have beer in my car that's I'm sending on the uh, truck to New Jersey tomorrow to my coworker because he loves Utica Club. He had it his first time when he came here last. And he's like, Dave, can you send me some on a transfer truck? I go, I got you, brother. I'm just going to put it in. Yeah, I'm sending him Utica Club on a transfer truck, marking the box like it's IT shit. And in reality, it's going to be a 12-pack at Utica Club. Tell me that shit's not funny. Thank you, Evan. Oof. Wait, what am I doing? Han Mono versus Ashbringer. That is IT, yup. You work in logistics, I mean, or food. Because New Jersey's are, uh, are, uh, oh, what am I doing? New Jersey's our main, uh, corporate office where he's at. So, anyway, here we go, guys, going into game number one. Game numero uno. Let's see it. We got Ashbringer and Han Mono. A TVP this time. Spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of Oceanborn in the deal. Give it up for Han Mono. His opponent in the upper left. He's blue. Give it up for Ashbringer. Our Protoss player. Got a little TVP for you. Don't you know? And I got some coffee for me, which I shouldn't have. And it's hotter than fucking... I don't even know what to describe it as, but it's going to burn. It's like McDonald's coffee lawsuit hot, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying, guys? And no, I'm not going to burn my penis, as Ricky says in the trailer park, boys. You know, the memes are, are real for days. Yeah, the window is kind of, I don't know. It'll cool down a little at a time, but I think I had accidentally hit the uh, wrong button on the microwave and it was in there a little longer. I stopped it. All right. Probe going for a little harass on the SEV is going to chisel at another one a little bit. Taking a bit of damage here. Getting a little five banger. And a little ten banger. Actually, he's getting a little fifteen banger on the one. I don't know about that, mate. He's going to take some hull damage on the probe. Oh, yeah, he's going to get away. Not really forcing much. I don't really like doing that myself or seeing that. They caught the person shoot. They did, Evan? Yeah, that, I was telling chat yesterday, we had somebody shooting a gun four times off. That's awesome. They did actually catch him. Apparently, the neighbors reported stuff, too. That was it in the news or something? Jeez. Evan, I might have to, I might steal some beers from you again. No, I'm just kidding. I, I really shouldn't. I'm, I had some last night. I'm feeling it today because I couldn't sleep two nights in a row. It is only but Wednesday. It's another day in America. Yeah, just another day in West Utica, New York. Fucking shitty place this is. All right, Ashbringer going for a stalker, stalker opener. Interesting. You don't really see too many. You don't really see too many players open stalker, stalker unless something cheeky's coming. And there's absolutely nothing cheeky coming out of Ashbringer so far. He's just playing very standard. Looks to be a one-one-one. So I don't know. I, I'm thinking a depth stalker would be even better. He could have got a twilight a little quicker, potentially. Adept, adept even. Uh, but I, either way, it's what it is, guys. It is just how he opened. He's getting a tech lab. Is he going to go right into tanks? That's my question. It looks like he's going to go into a widow mine off the tech lab. Is he going what? Why? Is he, I am really confused here by what uh, Ashbringer is doing. 
Or not. Now nah, Ashbringer Han Mono. Why is he going Tech Lab then building a mine? This is weird. Han Mono with the strange builds. The very strange builds, guys. This is like some Jim Morrison shit, guys. This is strange days. Strange days, motherfucker. We got Widow Mines building. Now if you got like drilling claws. Uh I would say cool. But this is like not a build, man. It is a build, it's high mono, but I really want to ask him about that. Why would you get the That's just a question mark to me. Okay. Double Widow Mine Drop makes sense. It's just like, I, I guess you can go right into the tank right after, but it seems a little strange. I like the Sim City from Han Mono on the other side of it. Ashbringer does have a pile on here for scouting for mines. This is one on the back side. Uh, just how the map is, like you can put one right here. Um, I don't actually hate this. This gives you a little bit of time to see. Medivac making its way out. Plus one going down for Han Mono. He's getting a Raven out gonna be a marine tank raven push got a forge and a robo bay coming down for Ashbringers. blink finishes up and he should be able to get charge right on the back foot of it does he do it unless he wants to get more stalkers see how many gates is he on he's on just two gate two gate and a lot of tech which isn't too bad and he is gonna catch does he blink oh almost catches the medevac but almost taint enough gonna try to go chase it down observer is gonna pin it down it's gonna be fine for a mr. Ashbringer I don't actually hate him getting a third base here he's uh, pumping out the army getting the Colossi getting the plus one to get extended he didn't get charged though wouldn't hate him getting charged pretty soon charge finishes relatively fast guys so for Protoss, it's not really that much of an investment to usually go right into charge. He didn't really warp in any stalkers too much, so he could have literally just immediately started charge and still got all the rest of it shortly thereafter by the time uh, the Forge and the Robotics Bay went. I think he might have had to wait for Extended Thermal Lance just a hair, but in my eyes, it'd be a little better. Oh, tank is uh, going to reveal itself. The uh, Observer's not here. The Observer's here. What happened to that medevac? Did it die? Nope. I'm like, what happened to it? I don't see it. It went back home. It certainly went back home. All right. That being said, it's a little bit of a war of attrition. The stalkers just pinning out, uh, waiting for the push to pick something off. Stem and combat shields finishing up. The plus one infantry weapons finished. I actually wouldn't hate uh, plus one infantry armor going down immediately in a weird way just because of how this game's playing out. Han Mono not rushing to take a uh, third base. Is it a possibility of a uh, two racks or two base all in? Or like at least this push with a boys pool? I would say entirely yes. But stem and combat shields not done means our Terran player probably shouldn't have pushed that early. I like the double raven that he get. In yeah, he got interference matrix too, by the way. Uh, when you're getting interference matrix now... I really think this is the play for Terrans, and we've been seeing more of them more of them doing it. Get two Ravens out because you're committing so much to that tech. If you're going against Protoss, it's way worth it to get the two. You've invested so much time on that tech lab on your starport, it's well worth it to get the second Raven. You know what I mean? Alright, Stim and Combat Shields going on. Like it for Han Mono getting plus one ground armor, plus twos on the way for Protoss. Couple shield batteries going down. He forgot charge. No, he didn't forget charge. All right, he's got Zelly boys. He's got stalkers. He's got blink. He's got sentries, and he's got two colossi. But there's gonna be interference matrix for days. Charge loss should be pretty good against this though too. Guardian shield is activated. He's gonna clean up the tank in the front, but oh, three colossi immediately. Interference matrix. Uh, the force fields are pretty good though. Still, he needs these Colossi to deal with this army. Third one popping has got a nice battery overcharge. Still active for just a few seconds, and he does have another battery. The SCVs are getting grinded. Oh, no, no micro on the Colossus. He didn't micro it back. Not like this, man. He did not micro. That was actually four Colossi. 
another fourth Colossi coming. BK Rock, to, or just get four tanks in the high ground? Exactly. Exactly, but still. It was looking rough for Han Mono for a second, I thought. But at the end of the day, we didn't micro our Colossi back. Well, it was, uh, the one was Interference Matrix. Little Miss Micro from Ashbringer. Can Ashbringer hold, though? His Arby's getting pretty big. Succeeding Han Mono's, but he really needs his third base. Actually, Han Mono pulled boys the last time, so... He might actually be able to live without it even, but he still needs to get a good position. Widow Mine coming in. Guardian Shields are activated for quite a while. The Stalker's trying to target fire some things, kind of. Raven still had another Interference Matrix. Not a lot of Marauders here. A decent amount, but still, that means a Colossi. O1 was out of position of the battery overcharge. Yeah, he needs these Zealots to come in for the tanks. And he's not disengaging. He's going to throw away another Colossi. Why would you throw the Colossi? See how many Colossi died in there. Three laser giraffes dead. Kind of worth it, but kind of not. He held the third base, but barely. Han Mono doesn't have a third base. He's just two based, guys. This is not what they meant when they said two based. 28 workers. Yeah, he looks pretty dead. Because he pulled his entire mineral, uh, BK rack. You're not kidding. Ay, 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 Dark Strength coming down. Han Mono looks like he's in a lot of trouble. Our Protoss player going into plus uh, one ground armor with plus two weapons. Yeah, Han Mono is, should by all rates be dead. He, he, look at look at Terran. Well, what's he going to do, guys? He's going to mule hammer his way out of it. Giving him just enough economy. Well, Han Mono's transition, I don't know. He's not really going to be able, he's just going to be able to max get some more armor or armor. Army, get a group of stuff together and that be it. He doesn't have much of an army either. Like Ashbringer by rights basically just wins the game. It's not too many Colossi, just he literally pulled all it, you know, he did a boys pull. It's more versus less. The inco like he doesn't have a big enough army. If he had a bigger army. It'd be different. See, he's going for it. He's literally relying. This push is the last push he can do. And it's just not enough. He's got 1-1. One, one. Protoss is about to have plus two ground armor with it. He's got an Archon. He's got Sentry. He's got a ton of Zealots. He's got a third Colossi again. An Immortal coming in. Why do we, we're seeing the Disruptors fall off. But I almost feel like a Disruptor would be pretty good right here. Oh, nice catch on the tank. Doesn't kill it, but still. There are SCVs there to repair it. They are going to do so. There's just going to be so many Zealots. The Immortals are actually a good call, though. They would tank a bunch. Well, he couldn't really... He can't really hunker down. He has to attack pretty much because he's so committed. There's no way... With 28 workers to, like, 60, there was no way he could have macroed out of this. His Ashbringer was uh, would 100% go for like a a charge lot Inquisition. Yeah, exactly. It's two base versus three base, and I I do like that Ashbringer just decided to play the defensive game after all. Ashbringer is going to take the first game and a pretty solid hold against a pretty cheeky man. Ay ay ay. going to game number two just a momento guys i need to make new artwork and i need to make new merch i want some merch ideas of shit you guys actually would like and i'm gonna make it i'm gonna draw it we're gonna make new dave merch but until then you guys should do me a favor and check out my merch store all right it's pretty dank could be better, but I have not updated in a while. And some of the stuff was cut. Streaming at Stronghold. He overpushed with less economy. Well, it wasn't that. He actually had a pretty... It, it was a two-base all-in. So at the end of the day, in a two-base all-in, you're going to either end it and their first push. And if not, you have to keep the aggression on and have more. But he didn't. He wasn't able to get the damage. Spawning in the upper left-hand corner of Cosmic Sapphire and the Teal. Give it up for Kramke's Han model. 
His opponent in the bottom right in the blue. Giving up for Ashbringer. All right. Let's see what we got. This one's a gate scout, unless it's a proxy or something from uh, Mr. Ashbringer. He's just going to scout, though. This is an old map. You had two gold bases. Oop. Nope. Sorry, you had the gold base on this side, and you have two rich Vespine uh, gas bases there. Everything else is similar. This I actually kind of like this map. I kind of missed this map. It was big. It was whatever. But it was, you know, I remember playing on it and kind of not liking it, but it's really not that bad of a map in hindsight compared to some of the ones we've had. But this is an older one. That's one of the cool things about this tournament. Yeah, exactly. But the West, this is actually, you know, in this case, it's the East, but yeah. Some similarities, you know. Kind of a standard one, but kind of just some little quirkiness. You got lots of big room in the in the bases, so drop potential, warp prism potential, speed length potential, all sorts of stuff. Um, but also, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Can I ask you a specific problem with about two to three hotkeys that I have problems? Yeah, you could ask chat too. Not just me, but chat, because we are commentating. What hotkeys are you having problems with? And you can always change your hotkeys if you just can't get it. But if you're brand new to the game, I would say read up on the stuff too, but. Ha! GMs and chat. True. Yeah, you can change F3 and F4. My F1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are all camera locations. And 7. Which I can't read 7, but. You can actually change it to camera locations. You can do a lot. What are these SCVs doing, guys? Hold on. Han Mono going 3 racks Reaper with SCVs. I don't think I've ever seen this. Han Mono going in the back. He's going to send the boys. Once the Reapers go in. Reapers target firing the Stalker. The Stalker's pushing out. But the SCVs going in to distract. This is a weird one. He's going for the uh, battery. Getting some work done on the workers, but still. The SCVs are out. The probes are going down a little. Oh, the force field trap. Oh, look at this. The SCVs are trapped with the force field inside. 200 IQ strap from Ashbringer. I have no idea what the hell on Mono is doing. But it's kind of fucking cool. Let's be real. Oh, my goodness, guys. Well, GG's called. Hot Mono takes game two. Yeah, if you're playing arcade games and stuff, man, you're going to have to look into that. It's going to be going. Those are, that's how the map makers made the games. So you're probably not going to be able to, you're probably going to not be able to do those functions. Yeah. You'd have to, like, modify the map, if I'm not mistaken, or make a mod. Cat incoming again? Which one? Mitters. Hey, Mitch. Good girl. Rich Lanigan. All right, so we're going to go into game number three, guys. Pretty spicy series. Who's going to take it? That was a really weird on uh, all in. Oh, I don't even have the bracket. All in, guys. The bracket's not going to be updated until after. And I kind of scuffed the order of these. But you know what? I'll have to put that on after this game because I queued it up. Actually, you know what? Fuck it. Oh, I see Master's Cup 148. Let's see. Hold on. I'm just going to do this. We got a minute. I'll show you where we're at. Edit Command B. 
There you go. All right. But yeah, these games were played in the past, but updated live. Anyway, spawning in the upper, not necessarily live, but after the cast, in the upper right-hand corner of Hectate, in the teal. Give it up for Han Mono. His opponent in the bottom left in the blue. Give it up for Ashbringer. All right. Anyway, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. StarCraft is a bit of a... That's kind of a thing for a more casual thing, but yeah. there's Not everybody's going to be into that. Usually when you're in a tournament or something, it's not... You can, you're generally going to be talking to... Uh, you're going to be talking to chat more than the streamer. Because right now I'm not doing a good job of casting the games. All right, this is the pretty standard 20 Nexus, 20 or 20 core, 20 Nexus, 20 pylon for Ashbringer. <laughs> yeah, like there are more. Uh, technically, that's not true, BK. Eric. There's more people that play arcade, custom, and co-op than there are that play rank feet 1v1. But Yeah, but yeah, exactly. It's like when you're talking to them in a tournament or something, people are literally going to be like, it's not the right time, to, not the right context. All right, anyway. I'm just here to hang out for the moment, so I'm happy that we have this tournament. I'm putting $200 toward the $600 prize pool, so it's an OSC and Dave partner tournament. And the clothes will be good. We have some invitations. Oh, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I used to play how I got started, guys, in StarCraft 2. I actually found I'd like ranked and I'd have a. All right, I wouldn't play ranked. I would play unranked back then, learning. And I'd play the campaign and I'd play a lot of co op. I played a hell of a lot of co op. But I also played like Nexus War Center Bridge and I used to play customs or uh, campaign uh, arcades. I actually did. So, yeah. Anyway, looks to be a cheeky build from Han Mono again. He's going for three racks factory. A little more standard, but a really aggressive one. Han Mono actually pushing, looking for an adept. Ashbringer's not played a single game where he's went adept. This is so interesting, his play style. He's going Stalker, Sentry, Robo. Almost reminding me of M. Canning. Aye, aye, aye. All right. Helmian's going to push on out here. All right, so there's going to be Stim. Is it going to be Stim Concussive or Stim Combat Shields? I'm guessing it's gonna be a stim uh, combat shields, but if he scouts the stalkers and sentry, I think this is a case example of going for stim concussive. Three racks factory is a bit different of a build though, so he's okay. No, he's gonna go for a tank. 100% it's gonna be a marine tank marauder push. The hellions kind of going to jabate a little. Actually, this is kind of a. Th gotcha, I'm throwing you off, Bill, uh, from uh, on Mono. Ashbringer opening pretty safe, though. He's not going to have Blink and stuff, but he's going to have a fast as shit Colossus or a fast Disruptors. And if he gets some information, he's going to see that he's going to need fast as shit Disruptors. <laughs> yeah. All good. You're helping him out, BK Rack. Thank you. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, if you're newer and you're, you know, you casually play, I understand. People got their different things, but sometimes you got to read the crowd. You're going to get, like, obviously, for casting a pro tournament live, I'd be a little different, but it's a weeknight. Dave's tired. We got some good games. And I'm just kind of sitting back and chilling and watching with you. Until something spicy happens, because I'm exhausted. All right. All 
I could probably teach you some more to judgment. Yet he's shown me some, but I've like, uh, I actually know more than I do. <laughs> more than. than I realized with Terran. I just always do the same shit lately. Um, still. Hellions just, uh, kind of keeping some presence. It's a damn fast Colossus, a damn fast extended thermal lance. We got the Twilight and Forge coming. And we got some more gates. So this is almost a two base all in from Ashbringer, but you know he could take a third base. Han Mono set up where he could macro out of this. He's just honkering down. He's got two base saturation. His army supply is actually pretty close to Ashbringer's. That's kind of terrifying for him. Yeah. Anyway, with that being said, we got charge and plus one coming down behind it. So you'd kind of figure a build like this. Looks like Ashbringer's going for a pretty late third, but he's got a beefy army. Hot Motto, funnily enough, with more workers than him. Why isn't Hot Motto going for a third? But these guys are bullpoint point very aggressively. It's kind of wild to see this. Hanamato's got his third coming before Ashbringer. Ashbringer's going to scout it. I think that's why he, uh, what he did is reaction to uh, Hanamato right there. The bunker, the double starport from Hanamato is wild. So he can get out Vikings, he can get out Medivacs fast. It's kind of a wild move. You're mad mad Hanamato who does have just plus one infantry weapons. Charge is going to finish. We got three Immortals, two Colossi. Why's he only got two Colossi? It's actually pretty funny he made another immortal, but he's going into a temple archives and a second forge. As time goes on, it's going to get rougher for Han Mano, I feel like. Not really. I mean, he's got... He needs to just keep on his upgrades, and he's not getting plus one infantry armor. He's going to have his third base land. The Hellions they are not even going to be an issue at this point. Not even worth it. Not even worth worrying about at that stage of it. He's already in position for him. Clean one up. The hallucinated phoenix is going to scout it. Is he going to scout the third base or the push? And this isn't even going to be a push. He sees the army, though. Anmano just posturing to defend the third as he gets a ghost academy. He did forget plus one infantry armor. Hanmano! Not like this. Big mistakes were made. The Hellions go down. It looks like once and for all, all four Hellions have died. Five workers have fallen for Ashbringer. It's about it, but... Both of them just getting a bigger early army supply. All right, how many Vikings is this? Six Vikings, 12 Marauders, and three tanks. The tanks aren't even here, by the way. We got Widow Mines against all this Colossus charged that Archon. With a plus one going into 2-1 two, two, uh, two, for Protoss. Two uh, weapons plus one infantry armor. And I don't know what I, uh, what I make of this so far. The Immortals be tanky, we got sentries, we got a couple Colossi, some Stalkers, but not really a ton to deal with the uh, Vikings. But if the Vikings overextend, the Archons and Stalkers getting on them would be a problem for uh, Ashbringer. Ashbringer is getting dropped on by Han Mano, who does clean up a bit of workers, is going to take out the Temple Archives, a gas. Ooh, Mamma Mia. Was he researching Storm? I don't think so. He's going to immediately start a Temple Archive somewhere. I'm guessing down here. Yes, he is. And that whole mineral line's cleaned up. And when you're down to three bases from how it goes, that's kind of rough. Three Marines do survive, but... Ay, ay, ay. Kind of rough, not going to lie. The two Colossi just fine. He should have dropped another Colossi, honestly. Or a Disruptor, like I was saying earlier. Probably be the move. Actually, he could probably pounce on this. He's going to lose this base otherwise, mate. I know he's got Widow Mines and Tanks, but there's so many Zealots here. And all the Immortals. Yeah, he's just... Oh, wow. Hanmato's going to disengage. He knows he got some good damage. But you're talking to Protoss, who's going into Blink now. He lost his gaze, uh, gas, but he lost a lot of workers. Hanmato, in the meantime, kind of not super Macron, but at the end of the day, he's got quite a bit here.
All right. Well. Got some medevacs going out. And kind of full force. And uh, let's see. Alrighty. And to answer Chat's question, he doesn't understand why people play melee. Melee is usually a way to set up matches with friends, but usually you're doing uh, when you're setting up custom maps. That's what players do when you're playing in professional, semi-professional, amateur, or rookie tournaments. And yes, some of those still go on. In fact, I got to do another. I got to do like some uh, lower MMR tournaments. I think it's been a while. I might talk to Krista because she said she wanted to do one, and I want to kind of talk to her about it. But I think we both have different things we want to do. But I mean, obviously, would help her. But still, it wouldn't be my first rodeo. You know. That's what they all say, fisherman true. What up, buddy? All right, we got four medevacs, mostly full, pinned down by all the stalkers. Four CC going down for Han Mato. A fourth base possibly going to be attempted for Mashbringer. Where are they going? Yep. 100% is going to try to get a fourth, um, especially after he scouts this, by Han Mato. Han Mato does have these cheeky widow mines right there. I kind of like that. For defense, the army, look at this. Both of them are almost maxed out. But notice something, they both have a very low worker count. I could just picture Roddy chewing the hell out of uh, Ashbringer from how low of a worker count he has. But both these guys with low worker counts and huge army. All right. Well, you, how you meet friends, you can meet them in Twitch. And you talk to people. And you'll meet friends to play with. That's the best part about StarCraft. All right. It is the community. And people you can meet anyway that are not like necessarily like the everybody you know thing. You can always meet all sorts of people. All right, anyway. The Nexus is going down. The Blink is going to be denied and the Twilight's going down. The forges are going down. Oh my god, Han Mono's getting so much damage in terms of infrastructure over here. Oh my god. The one Marine even annoying him to a point where Ashbringer almost finished off one of his gateways. So that's a lot of production, a lot of tech totally decimated for poor Ashbringer. Han Mono looks like he's going to take out another Nexus, and Ashbringer cannot afford that. He's not using hey, the battery. Hey, hey. Who wants to have the fun? Well, Lorenzo, thanks for the raid, mate. Thank you, thank you. Hope you had a good stream. Flo, we're just casting the uh, OSC Masters Cup, which I got some skin in. Damn, Han Mono. With Basically, they both had massive armies leading him, but it looks like Han Mono's going to win. This is a one-base Protoss. This was a strange one. Flo might have liked it, even though it was like, yeah, it's kind of standard opener. How they played this game was so different. And guys, make sure you give Florencio a follow. The man, the myth, the sewer mermaid. It was an interesting outlook to play. I think even this st streaming stronghold guy. But, oh, the warp prism goes down for Ashbringer. Not that it really, I mean, he still has some production. It'd be better than nothing. But uh, man, losing the two forges. He did get some upgrades out. Three Nexi, a Templar Archives, a Twilight Council. Oh my God. That's a feels bad, man. There's a Widow Mine right here. There is an Observer, but it's not going to be there in time. And there's no Blink. Oh, this is horrible. There's no Blink. The Blink would stop with a second to uh, go down. The EMPs, they're just too much. Oh, my God. The Immortals desperately trying to cling on. And Ash, uh, Ashbringer tried. It was a cool way to play it. But Han Mono just did it. In a very, very cheeky series altogether. 
welcome Florencio Raiders. I hope Florencio, if you're there, had a good time. If not, I'm sure you're going to work or you're, you're Audi. Um, and that was another series down. Oof. We got Geralt versus Eric Fire. Guys, give me just a minute. I have to go blow my nose and stuff and uh, something. All right. I will be right back, Arino. We're going to go on to Gerald versus Eric Fire. Christ, Dave, have some love, you amazing man. What do you mean? I have much love to you guys. I just am a little under the weather still. I thought I was fully better, but I think I overdid it last night. Work's been killing me too, so. Um, bear with me just a minute, and uh, I just have to use the bathroom and stuff. Sorry, I can't English properly. <laughs> Funny way of putting it, but I'm not picking on you. You like my stream? Thank you, sir. It's okay. I got the gist of it. All right. Anyway, guys, we're going to go into game number one of Geralt versus Eric Fire. A Protoss versus Protoss. Did I update the title? I did now for sure. All right, here we are, guys. It's a best of three again. It's time another PvP. Spawning in the upper left-hand corner of Golden Aura in the red representing Psystorm Gaming. It is Geralt. Now, thank you for the follow. Green Spirit 2764. His opponent in the bottom right in the blue representing Match Arena. It is Eric Flair. Our young French... Protoss player versus our red. Psystorm Gaming Polish Protoss. Let's see who has the bigger PP. True upon them all. True, true. All right, guys. Going to be a high ground gate versus a high ground gate, or is there going to be a cannon rush? I don't think so from Geralt. I don't think so from Eric Fire. Eric Fire does love three gate robo, though. He's like. And always go there. Do I have a favorite race? Well, my main race that I play is Protoss. I have favorite races to watch. I have favorite matchups to watch. Uh, at the professional league or just in tournaments in general. But my, fav my preferred race that I play is Protoss. That's my main race. Uh, I will be casting a... Mod, funny enough, tournament this weekend with uh, Loco is going to be casting too. It is the Scion mod. It adds three races to StarCraft 2. So three additional races, and that's going to have the Genetron, Chiron, and Zayd. 
which is uh, in addition to Terran, Protoss, and Zerg. And the pro players even are going to have to play on the new races because that's what the whole porn. Yeah, I mean, I, he at least told me before, but if he says no, I understand. Uh, he said he was going to cash some. He said he'd cheek in a series with me or two. So that's actually exciting for me to be, if that's the case, to be able to cast with Loco. Because I do a lot of casting. And honestly, just like you guys, I had one of my games casted by Loco when I was in Platinum League, and it kind of got me into this stuff a little bit, too. I was actually di Diamond 3 the first time, and I dropped the Plat 1, and it was I was really hungover and memeing for my old team. There's a story behind it. Anyway, Eric Fire. Is he going to go in base? Geralt's the one with the proxy starport. Eric Fire has been pulling some cheekiness by playing standard games sometimes. And I don't think he's proxying because, well, he's looking for proxies. Eric Flair's been throwing everybody off by playing standard lately. Uh, from time to time. Never cannon rush? What do you mean? I cannon rush even sometimes. I'm really bad at cannon rushing, but I still do. Sometimes my cannon rushes are so bad, they're good. You know? I'm more of a proxy gate proxy robo proxy in one of the past there's a proxy void ray and i'm just bringing it back guy oh Gerald takes it eric fires molding hold on a second i need to check something we're getting into game two but guys yeah if you're new here smash that follow button all that stuff just like green spirit 2764 All right. Hello, hello. We're going to get into uh, game number two here in a second. I just need to check on something. Game numero dos. And this time, we are going to be on Oceanborn. One of the current maps. You know, you know. All right, here we go. Spawning in the upper left-hand corner of Oceanborn in the red. He got out of the top side again. It is our Polish Protoss from Psystorm Gaming. Give it up for Geralt. His opponent in the bottom right representing Macharino in the blue. Give it up for Eric Fire. I know the mod's already out. It's not my mod. We're doing a $1,300. It's $1,300 so far. A tournament on Saturday at 6.30 a.m. in the United States East Coast. So, 12.30 in Central European Standard Time, I guess it's called. Or 3.30 in the morning Pacific. It's a shitty time for those of us in the United States. I really don't want to wake up early as a guy with a full-time job. It does a lot of this. But I said I'd do it because the guys that, that made the tournament and the guy that made the mod are out of Australia. That's a shit time for me. So I might even be late in the morning. I'm going to tell him just a heads up. If I'm tired, I'd be sleeping. I can't even cast KSL on Friday, so just so you know. But anyway, this tournament's going to get better, and I promise to do stuff. Ocean Morn is the funniest death explosions. Welcome, Torchion. Yes, it does. I mean, I agree. It is definitely pretty funny. It's one of the water maps. All right. Gerald going for a proxy again. Is he going for proxy Stargate again? This is a little bit better of a wall for Eric Fire, and Eric Fire is trying to play macro games sometimes because nobody's used to it. Now, Gerald's usually a pretty standard guy. It's Saturday. Is the date. The date is the 
21st. October 21st, if you're in... It may be the 22nd if you're on the other side of the world. Right, Freak Show is all excited. I'm sorry I didn't say hi to everybody. Freak Show, Fisherman came in, Torchion. We got the old crew, some new faces. Florencio, who probably had to go to work <laughs> or eat. Um, I'm muted. I'm not muted. I'm not muted at all. You guys got me nervous. I'm like messing around with stuff here. All right, anyways. This is so wild to see Eric Fire being afraid of being proxied, and he is. And he's playing standard. Like, Eric Fire literally is the kid that's made his claim to fame by only 3 gate robo wing. And he's actually played some sick macro games. He was quite good at... Th I've seen him win games. He got was getting disgusting good at 3 gate robo. Ah, but he isn't ready for the... Ooh. Does get the wall. He had to cancel for the minerals. Don't hate that. The Stargate is found. Is there anything to defend? There's two stalkers. It's not bad in a century. The two adepts can take short, make short work of the Oracle, but that be it. Pylon is going to go down. The stalker is going to delay that. The adept shading in. Is he paying attention? Yes, he's going to time it just right. Nice defense from Eric Fire. Eric Fire is going to lose the probe to the two adepts, though, as it goes on. See if these... Oh, these guys actually put on the graph, guys. Beautiful stuff. They put on the graph. All right, Eric Fire trying to hide... Or, sorry, Geralt trying to hide the Adepts. Going into a Twilight Council and a later Nexus than his opponent, Mr. Eric Fire, who is going to get the Adepts up. But he's going to lose one. And it is going to be blocked. Uh oh that Sentry's in a bit of trouble. He is going to get the hallucination before... Okay, Sentry lives. Nice save by Eric Fire, ultimately. He's going to be economically ahead. Just a hair. Very well done. He's actually doing a good job. He's been adjusting the learning to play without just 3 gay roboing. Now, the graph, it, what it is, is you need to have the Observer++ Plus Plus or WCS mods when you make a custom game to show the graphs. Um, I can't do a battle report from a replay because these were our, this is the first time these games have been watched or casted by anybody other than the players. So with that being said, it's a pretty good. We got Blink going down for both of them. Stasis Wardy catching Zip uh, Probius. It looks like Eric Fire was setting up for a third base. Potentially he might have just been dropping a pylon. Yeah, he was going to get a pylon over there, kind of setting up for it, but not quite ready to take it. Army supply in favor of Eric Fire, too. He's actually going to blink after Geralt, funnily enough. How things played out. There's no shield battery, but there are two stalkers. It's looking like our Polish Protoss is a little pent down. Eric Fire is going to get that third base down ahead of Geralt. He is ahead on workers by a good amount. But Geralt's also going to go for a third of his own. All right, about... Uh, he's sleeping at the wheel for a minute. He's going Dark Shrine. Invisible men at the... Pro oh, my God. Look at this, guys. This is a Geralt move if I ever saw one. Hallucination's going to scout this, though. That's unfortunate. He's going to see the Stargate still there. He's going to see the... Po oh, yeah. Wait, he doesn't scout... The Dark Shrine, though. Let me take a look. I'm pretty certain of this. Nope, he saw it. He saw that warp, and he's got to know what that is. Uh, damn. Unlucky for Geralt. The proxy Dark Shrine on the reproxy, as I call it. You don't proxy once, you proxy twice. Geralt going to have Blink a little later. It's going to be shut down. And Geralt's likely going to have to cancel that. The two Oracles could be a problem. A group of Stalkers pressuring out here, but we got a shield battery and plenty of defense. Uh, wait, he's gonna let him finish it? You madman. Do we have a robo? We do. There's an observer coming out. He's like, yeah, fine. We'll let him build some DT so they die to my observers. Geralt's actually pretty good at DT micro. That being said, neither player going into charge. It's a follow-up. Geralt trying to get some value at the, uh, Oracle, but loses one. That is one Oracle lost. I know I just missed that out of observation, but... It doesn't matter, folks. Third base finishing for Eric, uh, for Geralt. Eric Fire leading still with a good bit of a worker lead. 
Even after losing four workers to the Oracle, Oracle is going to be recalled. And the Dark Shrine was canceled. That was actually good mind games. You're all, uh, God, I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to let it stay. No, you're all canceled it. Geralt of Rivia, true. He's a good friend of mine. I miss him. I don't get to see him as much. We used to be on the same team at Storm Gaming for a while, but he's still a good friend of mine. Overall, he knows I got his back. I just don't have time to cast EU stuff live anymore. It sucks. Like on weekends, sometimes if we get the money together, I could, I'd love to do some more tournaments. For those guys, I want to do more American tournaments. Because we've been doing a lot of the Korean StarCraft. I'm so precious. <laughs> you so funny. And this so crazy, Geralt. Does have defender's advantage with batteries. Has a cheeky stasis war, but the numbers game is just more of Eric Fire for the moment, but it's close. Eric Fire has to be careful. Geralt's gonna have a plus one lead eventually, but not right now. It's not gonna be too impactful in this fight. Eric Fire might lose this war prism if he's not careful. Oh, beautiful snipe by Geralt. The war prism does go down. And that being said, let's take a look at the income. Geralt now spiking with an income advantage. Army size kind of teeter-tottering as they posture out. Fourth base going down for Eric Fire, though. It's kind of nice if he can secure it, but Geralt's defending. Still Eric Fire. I would like to see him retreat, especially after losing the War Prism. Oh, if he blinks out of that stasis ward, he is so fucked. <laughs> I try to be human as best as I can. I mean, ain't that the truth, brother? Right, chat? It's all we can do is try to be human. It ain't easy for us Protoss players, too. Know what I'm saying? All right, plus one's going to finish for Geralt, and he even gets a snipe on the Observer. Geralt going into the Robo Bay means he's going to be able to build Disrupty Boys pretty soon from down here. That being said, Eric Fire pushed it on Gateway units, but he's going to be down an upgrade. Geralt remembering to get his plus two right away. Eric Fire's going to have to keep up with those. Can he get a denial on the... Okay, this I don't hate. Killing some static, getting a denial on the fourth is pretty good. But he doesn't want to lose all these stalkers. Even as nice as it is to get the fourth base. He's going to lose. Oh my god, he's going to lose a lot in the warp prism. It's going to be another point of contention. Neither player with charge and roll warp and zealots. Both of them forgetting charge. I've been seeing more and more PvP games where they're forgetting charge. That being said, this Nexus took a lot of hull damage behind it. So when it finishes... It's not going to be complete. Eric Fire getting a little sloppy with that War Prism. Eric Fire going for a fifth base, you mad lad. What is this kid doing? Going for a four stalker hit squad. I don't know if he spotted that, but nice blink. The stasis ward dissipates. Alright, look at the blink micro here. Look at the blink micro from both of them, but you know what? We gotta be careful of those disruptors. Disruptor only gets one injured stalker. Eric Fire is being very aggressive, but his macro is pretty good. Funnily enough, Geralt has one more worker. But Eric Fire at least is spending his money well at this point. They're staying on the same worker count pretty much. Eric Fire is gonna need disruptors of his own. Or some kind of like Stargate transition. You can still win with more versus less. But Geralt's the... In terms of army, Geralt's securing way more. War Prism is going to be a point of interest, maybe. Disruptor catches a bunch. There was a sick catch of Disruptor for Eric Fire. But he's on his back foot for army supply. Let's take a look at the structures. Eric Fire with just eight gates and a robo. Nine and two robos for Geralt with that. The Stargate it's saying is just this depowered proxy Stargate from earlier. Which was never dealt with. All right. As we get into it, Geralt may lose this observer, but I think he he pulled it just in time. Oh, but this is the problem of PvP. There was no vision. This stalker goes. A couple stalkers went down to the disruptor. But still, he's gonna trade some of them out at least. He just doesn't have enough army. Eric Fire's been too aggressive. Or I think he needed to go back to defend. He's been building this stuff. He's not been building an army. 
He just doesn't have the numbers, mate. That being said, both players just now getting charged 12 minutes into it. Eric Flair trying to get some shots. Oof. Disruptor catches one. Disruptor catches none. I think he lost an observer. No, the observer lived. Geralt's got so many disruptors. And at the least, Eric Flair could have got another forge. But like tech wise, he's literally on he's literally on stalkers, and that's it. He's going into charge so he can get zealots in a minute, but like I don't know, as much as he got greedy, he didn't build more workers. Now he has more workers, but he's got five next eye, mate. You need more army. You need up more tech. More army, more tech. Oh, that's a beautiful blink back, but so many disruptors. You got to really be careful here. He's trying to take care of the rocks. He upgrades. Well, Geralt is going to have plus three. Eric Flair is going to have plus three. He's behind on his upgrade, so we know that's kind of the case. I don't understand why he's not teching at all. Geralt going for the Dark Shrine. No, his first one was canceled at the proxy location, but still. There's no Dark Shrine. There's no Templar archives even, which can be kind of rub bold move against the uh, disruptors the eric fire is like just making literally pure stalker and he's gonna be down an upgrade for a bit oh nice blinks eric fire at least doesn't lose a unit keeps the war prism alive i don't know how much i like this you're all getting his fifth basis no six base going down for eric fire his base advantage is wild, but I don't know why he's at 82 probes. It's like he's just not trading that efficiently. Yeah, not at all. Geralt's got like a almost 3k supply lead at this point. Or uh, trade. Resources loss efficiency trade. But there's so many disruptors, guys. Disruptors now cost 4 supply. So that's a lot of army supply for Geralt, but it's really... No easy way to contend with them with just blank stalkers, man. And he, this is where I wouldn't even hate a Stargate and just Phoenixes. Like, build two Stargates, start out with Phoenixes, make a Sky Toss transition. Just because of how this is going. Um, otherwise, getting he should have been getting into Disruptors himself. A proper game with a lot of weirdness. A lot of mind games earlier on in this. Geralt dropping the, the balls. We're just now going into the second Robo and Robo Bay for uh, our blue Protoss player. Well, Geralt's making his more Stargate Fleet Beacon transition. He can build the Fleet Beacon because the proxy one, though he didn't get much done with it, is going to be there. Zelly Boy is going to go run and try to get some value elsewhere. Are going to do so. Yep, that's actually the Observer of... Look at how many Disruptors there are. This is insane. 11 disruptors. That's 44 army supply guys of disruptors now. A lot of static for Geralt means that's probably going to hold those zealots. And, uh, well, Eric fires six bases in trouble. The disruptors are going to try to get some dubs. And they are going to get some, but the nice target firing. Oh, God, the target firing is sick. But still, there's just so many disruptors. Again, that was 11 disruptors. Even with the best target flaring at anybody, there's no way you're going to win that. He got a little too greedy in the fight. Just because of some good trades, and Geralt had him right where he wanted to. He's going to lose a huge chunk of that army. It's now 89 to 60 army supply. Oh, the War Prism going down. In total, a deficit of, of well, it was almost 40 per second. Oh, Disruptor catches too much. Two more Stalkers. And 12 workers fall with that six base. Geralt now going for a six base. What is this game? All right, now the target fire is pretty good. The disruptors are falling a little bit at a time. Behind this, Eric Fire is going to get a, a six base of his own. As he fights off the Zelly boys, he's getting disruptors of his own. But man, he's had to spend a lot of money and losing the base was rough. Geralt now economically lead. Look at how much of a lead Geralt's had. Did someone give Eric Fire a challenge or something? Bob the Builder, exactly. So, like, all he knows how to build is, is stalkers. But that being said, the flea bacon. Guys, can you put some bacon in chat for pig? The flea bacon. 
is about to finish. We got more Stargates. <laughs> 200 IQ, Geralt even built, uses the proxy Stargate, and he goes into, like, Tempest or Carriers. He's gonna go into Tempest, if anything. Or Mass Phoenix, but he just builds him out of the proxy one, too. DT's going for Geralt. D power and the one Arthosis pile on her, too. Are gonna take down the fifth base Nexus. And, uh, damn. GG's called. Geralt's gonna take it at 2-0. But you know something, guys. Damn, boys. Oof. That was a series down. So that was the first quals. Let's look at the second ones. I may not get to all of them today. Uh, we have a lot of good games. We have Nicarak versus Ashbringer. Nice versus Mana. Another PvP, but wait, damn. That's a... That's a cool one. We have Liquid Mana. We have Four Jumi versus Demi. The German Memester versus the best Indian Zerg player in the world. And we have Dumaga versus Jaumek. Ukraine versus Poland. Fido, what's up, man? Dude, you gotta give it Eric Fire credit. He's been playing Mac. He was playing outside of his regular shenanigans. Like, I talked to him about it, and he did really well in a previous tournament. How you doing, Fido? What's up, brother, man? I'm good. I'm tired, man. One of these days, I'm gonna get a cast with you where it doesn't suck like that one time I was really shit-faced and annoying the shit out of you. You know? You know? Unless I get a message in pig. Sorry for lumping. Uh, David just said you got a message. Yeah, no, I I messaged him earlier about something. Um, yeah, I was just seeing if we needed anything. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one. That pig. All right, so. He was just getting back to me on something there. Trying to. Because I had a quest yawn. Well, I mean, I'll be honest with you. The other pig. Ha. <laughs> I, I'll be honest with you. Well, I'm in between stuff. We got different series coming up. I'm going to take a break with you guys just for a few. Um, well, the thing is, is like streams in general are like you read the crowd. Starcraft's obviously an old game. And if you're newer to it and you are, you're only you play a very specific thing, right? You're going into something where people are talking about pro players and this and that. You're going to find there's a lot of people that are going to give you shit. In which case, you you know, it, it, it there's a lot to learn about the game, period. So, like, when you go into, like, pig stream, you're going in to learn, usually. Pig does a lot of memeing on, on players and stuff, but he also, he's a pretty good player, you know. But he also does do some things to help. I don't know if there's... 
I'm sure there's other pigs in other games that stream, but he is the only X5 pig. But he happens to be one of our larger talents to the StarCraft scene. And he's a pretty good guy. Exactly. As far as StarCraft 2, he's probably the only pig that matters. But and as far as the gaming and esports industry, I highly doubt he's the only pig. And even streaming. Exactly, Fido. For most of us, we say pig. We know what we're talking about. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, as long as you're not talking shit, because I happen to really, really like the guy. Plus, that's just rude to do. I ban, like, we went, you know, we warn, we don't just straight out ban people here unless they're really fucking a troll or they just keep at it. And then we unban them and then reban them. You don't seem like you're a bad guy. Um. All right. So anyway. Yeah. That's fun. You can't lose in the criticism. I mean, it usually it depends. Like. Every caster and commentator and everybody else is going to have different ways they go about stuff, too. But anyway, I think we're going to go on to Nicarag versus Ashbringer. I should have been keeping tallies of the score to help Liquipedia out, no? One thing that I definitely need to work on, guys is actually trying to do I want to see if they'll actually let me contribute to uh contribute to Liquipedia more, you know. I would like to help out. Those guys are all slammed. They dedicate stuff, but it, you know, sometimes I'm sure they could use some help. Spotting at the bottom left-hand corner of Elcyon. Alcyone. It is Nicarak from Twisted Minds back again in the red. His opponent in the upper right in the teal. It is our Protoss player, Ashbringer, from Team Starcom. All right. I thought Starcom, for some reason, disbanded, or did people leave it? Alcyone. Alcyone? I forgot. The map that nobody can pronounce. Alcyone. That's what I'm going to call it. We're going to get a little prosciutto. We're going to get a little mortadella. You know, salsione. Little pepperoni uh, pizza. Some tortellini. All right, anyway. It's going to be a pretty standard opener from both so far. But I think it actually is pronounced like Alcione. El it's a... Uh, I gotta ask the map. I want to ask the map maker what it's actually what they intended it to be pronounced. That's what I'm gonna do. But one of many Greek goddesses of all sorts of stuff. We looked it up. Probe got bodied. Oh, look at that SCV. He's all happy. Simon the SCV over here with the kill. Mamma mia. Next is going down. We got a little more. Aye, aye, aye. He wants that Lake New George, New York, and New York City for two days. No, <laughs> he did not tell us that. I just met you today. Anyway, I'm talking to you guys. Think Italian and you'll be right. Alcioni. All right. Listen, my last name's Testa, but I'm only a quarter Italian. You know what I'm saying? But I am from central New York State. Upstate New York. 
Lake George is beautiful, by the way. Um, New York City. I mean, I got to make my way down to hang out with my boy Flapjack and some folks, but you know. Alrighty. Is going to be a 1 1 1 from Nicaract. And Ashbringer always does these stalker openers. It's kind of, in my eyes, it's a little inefficient. I don't understand why he doesn't do his. He doesn't ever adept open. Nice Eponimo. All right, let's see here. Stargate. Is going to be the uh, method of choice for Ashbringer. I hope it's not like an Oracle in the Blink Stalker kind of thing against Nicorak. It's possible it could work. I don't think so. This is a weird build, though. He's going... He's literally going Gateway into Phoenix. Usually, you'd go like Phoenix Charge. The Stalkers, I guess, are for safety, but like... I don't really like this. All right. Phoenixes and a couple Stalkers could be pretty good. Even if it's just a few Phoenix uh, to, with this uh, attack. Because he could act, but usually you don't even need the Phoenix, but he could actually pick them up and actually get damage and have one less Hellion. He needs the Phoenix now. Oh, no. He's going to pick up one. Oh, no, don't get overextended. What are we doing? Ashbringer and probes getting clumped up. The battery kind of keeping him there. He does clean it up, but how many probes did he lose? Ooh, the grade almost. Did it kill one? He lost seven workers. It's a disaster. It's a trap. The Mon Calamari and Chad are all losing it over here. So he is going for a very, word, very, very weird version of Phoenix Colossus. Now these Phoenixes have no energy for a Graviton Beam. The Phoenix with no energy. Yeah, he, honestly, a battery overcharge would have been well warranted there. And I think he had the energy available. I think just like you said, even if he just let them be with a battery overcharge, I think he had the tools. Oh, but he's going. Why? Uh, did we just lose a Phoenix too? No, we didn't. He just took hull damage on the one. Not a big fan of that play from Mr. Ashbringer. Mr. Ashbringer is going to go home and cry to his probes with his injured phoenix and his battered stalkers. Actually, they took no hull damage, though, so that could have been worse. Robotics Bay on the way. It's a really weird time Phoenix Colossus build because usually this one you do open with an adept. You cut warp gate. It's like a safer way to do it in a way, but it's going to delay everything. So kind of a strange one out of Ashbringer. Well, yeah, you need three stalkers would take a lot of hull damage and the reinforcing units would go. They could technically you can walk up to it if you're lucky and start shooting it and it's going to have to on siege. But SCVs and Marines would just kill it. And that Viking could even land. I mean, realistically, the Vikings going to be out for the Phoenix, but still. Nicarak had a pretty good defensive setup going into stem combat and plus one. Setting up for a timing, getting Marine, Marauder, Colossus. He did go, uh, yeah, it's a standard 3 1 1, some defensive tanks. First Colossi is coming out. Extended Thermal Lance. I like it in a way, Forge and Twilight, but Ashbringer has not been one for probing up a lot. I can set you in a cool spot, but yeah. He's going to have a delayed third. A very delayed third, but like... We'll see how Nicarak plays. Han Mono actually destroyed him. One sixty p video feels bad, man. That could be. That's just uh, if you're stuck on it and you have the bandwidth. That's Twitch being Twitch. Because I'm not like a Twitch partner. They don't prioritize my uh, stream for all always, so you can select the uh, stream quality. It's one thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure they do that for all Twitch partners, but I've seen plenty of people that aren't that always have it and like I don't seem like inconsistently they still we do all right here you know I still don't have that come up for everybody all right plus one ground weapons on the way with the chargey boys for Ashbringer it's looking a lot like his 
previous game against Han Mono. Army supply in favor of Nicarak. That's not surprising, but extended thermal lance at least going to pop one shield battery only for Ashbringer. He's not building any probes. Oh, no, he's out of position. He's not microing the Colossi. The Phoenix is trying to do some more picking up the Marauders at first. But the tanks... Oh, man, this is kind of a rough position. Are not going to be... Oh, yeah, there's enough Marines here. It'd be a problem. The Phoenixes are going to help now. The Colossi is out of position. He lost one. There's just not a lot of ground units here. The tank's doing absolute... Oh, the Phoenix is not doing much. Forcing a cancel on the third. The pylon's going to go down. And it's looking damn rough for Ashbringer. At 78 to 112 army supply with a double army supply advantage for Nicarak. He only has one medevac, but this is already just menacing. Phoenixes could help, but this robo is going to go down, I think. It's forced to be lifted. Charges down. That's going to help a little bit. Will the Colossi be able to help? I don't think so. The Marauders are just too many. And the rest of this is looking like GG. Nicarak taking game number one. That's not true, uh, 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 Ponemo, or, uh, stream, streaming stronghold, no, no. No, 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 it's an aff affiliate. The only thing, there's little things that I would ever care about with that, and it's just, because realistically, if your partner doesn't mean much other than a purple check mark most of the time, unless you're, like, a really, really big streamer. You know, but... Anyway, see, this is all in standard vanilla 1v1. You know? Oof. Let's see what game two brings us. And it's all about how your mechanics, your strategy, your how good you are at macro, how good you can play. But I don't know. These guys are pretty good players. So I will say that. I'm from the EU server in the bottom right hand corner of hard lead in the red. Give it up for Nicarac. His opponent in the upper left in the teal. Give it up for Ashbringer. All righty. Well, now. Looking kind of standard from Nicarak so far. I'm wondering what he does this game. Ashbringer. Probably going to do more of the same. I'll be honest, I'm not the hugest fan of how Ashbringer does it. He's a pretty good player. But I've not been liking his openers of late in his uh, PVT. Again, that's not an insult to him. I'm just not the biggest fan, be my opinion. I don't hate holding out on a second base and stuff, but it's, he needs to get a third. And uh, yeah, Nicarak defeating, defending Team Nicotine. He's helping people quit smoking with Nicarak gum, you know? A Russian Terran player and an anti-smoking supplement or quitting smoking supplement. I should probably take a leaf from Nicarac and stop smoking. Should probably not be smoking when my camera's on, like I told, like I've been starting to do with ESL because I have to try my best, you know. All right, 
It's going to be another double stock. Why are you doing the same opener? Ay, ay, ay. I mean, he did do a Stargate the last time, but I think if he's just doing that, he should have just won Phoenix Colossus. I mean, if he won a Warp Gate, he should have at least won an Adapter 2. He would have saved 50 gas. It would have helped him get anything a little quicker. All right, Reaper. Moving it around on the map. And a very standard opener from Nicarak with a 1-1-1. One, one, one. It's going to uh, Hellion out. Is it going to be one Hellion into Widow Mines? That might be the case, but who knows. He might go for a tech lab. All right. Let's see what we got now. It is a robo opener. One gate robo. We saw Ashbringer play a little bit like this, uh, similar to this before. It's trying to play safe. But at the same time, you don't have a lot of units this way. Uh, Warp Gate's about to finish. He's going to start to try to wall. Hellion not going out. It is going to be actually a couple of Hellions. He's going to medevac. It's going to be like a Hellion push with a Marine drop. I think this may be a Hellion push with a Marine drop. I do like the Stalker over here to get some information at the cliff. Like a Reaper cliff. But still, he is kind of in position. Shouldn't take him too long to react to the Reaper Hellion. So I think that's exactly what it's going to be. Two Reapers and a Hellion pushing, and he's going to go for the Medivac of Marines. And that'd be that. Two Tech Labs going down. One, potentially for a Raven. One for a Siege Tank. Unless he does drop it for the other racks. Yep, there come the other two racks. He's at least going to use them for one unit. So here's the thing. He's going to try to debate the attention of Ashbringer at the front. Well, he goes for the Marine drop in the back. It's not even a full medevac, but pretty close. Pylon's going to drop, but it's not going to be done in time if this goes right in. Anyway, here we are. How's this going to pan out? The drop's up here. He's going to try to bait these units away. And in come the Hellions and Reaper. Beautiful force field, though. How's the defense on the other side? He's going to pull the probes at least, but it looks like he might lose. He may lose an extractor. Or an extractor, an assimilator. Mamma Mia. Well, the medevac is going to go down. The Marines are going to be absolutely jack shit useless now. Oh, well, they're getting out. Let's get a stalker. And a lot of hull damage, but getting the uh, simulator too. In six probes, go down. I'd say that's kind of worth it for our Terran player. A bit of a committal, but it's not too bad. He's going into interference matrix, and I think he's going to. Is he just going to swap this off? Does he have his Raven? Okay, the Hellions are finally dealt with. We got a couple. Wow, all the lazy workers from the poles. Ashbringers kind of picked apart a little bit. There's a two immortal four stalker push. This is weird with an observer. Um, third CC going on. We got stem combat and plus one going down for Nicarak at a pretty standard timing. The Raven is out. He has to be careful not to lose this. Oh no, yeah. This <laughs> these are some dead marines. Uh, he does have a tank to retreat to, though. It's kind of nice. And the Observer is... Oh, going to get tickled. Still, the two Immortals going to be pretty important right here. A couple Marauders coming out. And the boys get in here to repair the Ravens. Not a bad idea. There's no Blink yet. There's a Twilight. It's a fast Colossus extended Thermal Light. So killing the gas actually was huge for our Terran player, Mr. Nicarak, here. Because you need a lot of gas for Robo units and all the upgrades. It was a crucial time. So that actually did delay Ashbringer in some regards. Double Immortal Drop. You don't see this every day uh, at this level. And out of these guys, this is actually pretty funny. A double Immortal Drop, guys, in, in PVT at this time. I don't hate it, though. He's going to try to target down. The Stimmer Combat Shields and SCVs are going to be able to repair it, though. But forced a lot of lost mining time. That was a, a bold move, and that would have been huge, but if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, it'd be Christmas all year round. He should have attacked this one. Actually, that was combat shields. I think he could have got the high ground one. The SCVs barely made it in time. I think he could have denied stem, actually. You don't know which one it is researching, obviously, but when you're the player, uh, the Protoss player in that case, but what is this guy doing here? Bolly, get back to work. Polly the probe over here. 
On his union smoke break. Aye, aye, aye. Polly wanted to get polished. Here we go. Marine Marauder drop. Stem's done. Com uh, combat shields are done and plus one's done. It's gonna actually get a lot done. There's static being dropped, but the timing's a little rough. The only four stalkers that chisel at this. Medivac available to heal. It's a full kill on, I believe, what is a Photon Cannon. No, it's a shield battery. The cannon's in the mineral line. All right, charge and plus one. Likely to finish up just enough defense here. However, Nicarak's going to push with his massive army. Some of it's tied up in the medevac, but at the end of the day, it's going to be a tough hold. Charge finishing up is kind of nice. Let's see how many gateways are for available. There's going to be six in just a moment. It's going to finish, but it needs to complete into a warp gate. Interference Matrix is huge, and the Vikings are going to be a bit of a problem for our Protoss player. And custom shells have finished for the Marauders as well. As we get into it, Zealots chiseling and killing a tank with the Immortals. But the two gates in the front are going to be in a lot of trouble. Sentries force the fight. The air units, which don't do too much. The two Colossi trying to hold the four Stalkers just here. One of the gates falling, another in trouble. Battery overcharge is activated at the natural. The stalkers, the Zealots, and the Colossi trying to kill the tanks are going to do so. But the Colossi is going to fall to the Vikings, sadly. Needs to keep this other one alive. There are no Stalkers. Oh my god, this is rough. No, Ashbringer. He loses another Colossi. That's like 600, 600 in resources gone in no time. We did help hold the push. But there's a lot of damage lost, and guess what? The drop is back. Getting several workers. And there's no blink where we're going, so this medevac's gonna be able to zip around uncontested. Less warpings. Alrighty. Another immortal coming out, questionably. Did he lose his robo bay? I feel like he lost his ro he no. He's looking right at it. He did not. Ha, the Sim City's blocking him. He almost got a few more hits on that. Army supply and workers. Like, Nicarak's insanely ahead, guys. I hate to say this. I do hate to say this. But, in my eyes, guys, Ashbringer looks pretty dead. He's got plus one. That's about it. He's got his chart. He's getting a lot of gates, but Nicarak's on 1-1. One, one, has more interference matrix. Is there a line on Archons? There's no ghost with this army. The Archons are pretty good, but with this many medevacs, stop. He's fighting away from the battery overcharge. The Colossi is going to be char targeted down. It is going to chisel at some of this army, but there's so many medevacs. There's not enough units. Stalkers coming in. They, oh, yeah, he's tilted. Nicarak takes it in a swift 2-0. Damn, boys. Pretty good stuff. All right. I may go grab another one. Another Brewski or two Charlie. For my brother, but... Next up, I'm going to give you guys a choice. We're going to watch another PvP. We got Nice versus Mana. Giddy up. Thanks for the follow, GN Wolf. Welcome, welcome. Uh, nice versus Mana. We have four Jumi versus Demi, and we have Demaga versus Yalmek. So, a PvP, a PvZ, and a ZVP. Two Zerg Protoss and two, uh, one Protoss Protoss. You guys decide. I'm going to put up a prediction, and I'm going to go take a little break. See, it's been a long day for me at work. How you doing, Basica PVZ? I'm going to make a prediction, or I'm going to make a poll for you, rather. I'm going to take five. I will be going nowhere. You guys can wait a few minutes. Let's see if I can run ads and get them out of the way, too. Maybe I'll do less than five. I'll do... Um... All right, I'm going to give you them. Oh, excuse me. Uh, a wrong person. Uh, ba -ba boom, boom, boom. Or Jumi. 
the Maga. Z versus Jalmec. I'm going to put this poll for three minutes. You guys tell me what you want. You guys use this poll and tell me what you want for a match. I'll be back in just a little bit. I'll put some music on for you. Hey, 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 who wants to have some fun? I'm Cosmo Kramer, the Yes Man. Kamikaze. Thank you, dude. Hey, you're streaming? Thank you for the raid. I hope we got Florencio earlier with that shout out. That was mid commentating. I hope you had a good stream, mate. You do slash pull. Forward slash pull. Kamikaze, my man. All right, looks like we got... Where's the pull? Shit. Looked like we had uh, the MAGA. Was the pull? Demaga versus Xiaomek. I 
I don't know, mate. All right, anyway. We are going to go for Damaga versus Jalmec. And uh, thanks again, Mr. Kamikaze. All right. First match. First match coming up. All right, here we are. Spawning in the upper right-hand corner of Alcioni. From Blazer, it is Jelmec. My man. Playing Protoss. His opponent in the bottom left. My teammate. From Ukraine, from Berserker Esports. In the red, it is Dimaga. Our Zerg player. Alrighty. Is going to be a standard opener from Jamek. The Maga. Just looking to see if he has a probe or acid, apparently. He is going for his 16 hatch. Very standard opener from both. That doesn't surprise me too much, but this is certainly going to be a banger. Jamek, look at that. He's not even harassing, he's a man of honor. He is gate scouting. These guys should be able to put on a good one. All right, got a little probe harass here. We shall see. All right, anyway. Well, we got a gate core going down. A little bit of a standard setup, as I said. John Mac just going for okay. He went for a 19 core, actually. That's pretty wild. 20 gas. It's how it be sometimes. Mistakes could have been made. He could have just been choosing to do it, but I think I think there was just a slight mistake somewhere in there, maybe. Some people actually do a build off 19. Why? I couldn't tell you. It's just how they do it. Alrighty, anyway, two queens, four lings coming on out. We do have a big supply block from an adept getting shaded, or sorry, getting uh, chrono boosted across. This is going to be a Stargate opener from Xiaomek. Very likely to go Oracle, it would appear. Could do something else. The lings are going to shade. Oh, the probe does not make it. These lings say, get out of here, boy. Ziggy the Zergling. Got the kill, and he's going out for more blood. He's going out for information, at the least. The Adept is going to go out across the map, but not going to catch this. And again, guys, this is the OSC Masters Cup, number 148, the o online sports championship. Uh, the Masters Cup's a pretty cool one. This is the 148th one. It's an honor to do it. I'm partner, I partnered up with them. I'm on the hook for a couple hundred buckaroos of the 600 for this, but it's a uh, we have open qualifiers. Now we're under the closed coming up. And then we're going to have the playoffs. Pretty cool event. Got some really good players. All these guys are pretty good. We got a bunch of different ones all along, uh, all along the sides. Warpgate was started up before, about 50% complete. Oracle on its way. It's probably going to be what used to be called the hero build, but something to that effect. Not quite the hero build. Actually, we don't see a pro. Yeah, he's got a stalker with this. We don't see a probe uh, going out to take a nexus just yet. It's going to be a four minute nexus thereabouts. Oracle going out to try to find some blood. The Maga in position with Queens in path. May Jalmec. I don't like the... Oh, he loses the Oracle. Uh, yeah, you don't want to send an Oracle over creep because you're just going to send it to its death against any pretty good Zerg player. 
maybe that was just a mistake. I mean, obviously it was a mistake, but I think if he went around to the sides, he tried going into the main. If he tried going to the net, if he went around here, you know, you get a better chance. But uh, that was a, a bold move. It's going to be a forge. No twilight. Interesting. Here's see what goes on. He's got a couple of depths to hold off the stalker at the main base wall. To buy time, at least. The oracle is going to scare the lings away for now. Namaga getting some more lings, getting a roach warren. He's got several queens. His third base is getting saturated. As Yalmex third is just coming online. Right, we do have a Robo and a Twilight coming down after the Forge. No uh, upgrades being researched. The Shade. Oh, man. He does. Okay, it's a couple of kills for free. Doesn't take any hull damage. The battery heals up the Adepts just in time. Is he gonna, he sh you know, you might want to throw the Shade before. Yeah, no, the extra Ling reinforcements are going to help him out. He's trying to get some kills and trying to keep the Adepts alive. Takes a little bit of health damage. That is just a, that's actually pretty good play. He's going to lost some probes to get over from the main and natural. And he has done a good job of chiseling away at this. Plus one is being researched. Nothing from the Twilight Council. Question mark. No, uh, no blink. No charge. No Templar archives going down. Jamek has got a bit of a bank. He's starting to spend it. He's getting a Robo Bane. Okay, he's going Blink Stalker. Disruptor, Blink, blink Stalker, Colossi. The Oracle's trying to find some value. Looks like he got no kills with the one... No kills at all, and he took hell damage. It's very unlucky. I almost wouldn't have hated him using him uh, defensively. What if he's not going to be able to find any damage, but he might get some info. He's going to see this base is coming down. And that'd be about it. There's even a queen here. If he didn't lose that other one, he might be able to take out a queen even with three. The lonely queen. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Jalmec, there's a lot of queens here. What are we doing, man? All right, Robo Bay coming down. Second robotics facility on the way. As we get into a big, massive gate explosion. Looks like he is probably going to go for disruptors. I would imagine this is Blink Stalker Disruptor. He's got the warp prism coming. He's just sitting tight on three bases for now. No more probes. I think he's really going for a three. Yeah, it's a three base Colossus push. Okay. For now, he could just as easily get a fourth base, but he's unable to find damage with the Oracles. Really next to none. Let's take a look at the trades, in fact. Three probes for two drones and ten lings. I guess that's all right, but Damaga's double expanded. He's got his fourth, fifth following behind it. And he's going to probably start pumping out an army here. At 68 drones. Maybe sneaking a few drones here and there. Because he gets a bailing nest and infestation pit. Plus one range attacks almost done. Khalil Reconstitution, that's Roach Speed finishing up right here for Damaga, my berserker brother. Aye, aye, aye. Damaga's a wicked nice guy, by the way, guys, too. So is Yalmac, actually. He's a ridiculously nice guy. He's been a boy for a while, too. Damaga, I've been... Or not... Damaga, I've always liked, but... Um, I haven't known him as long as uh, Jalmex. Jalmex. Been a bud. All right, speaking of buds, we're not building any more probes. He's getting pylons. If you're going for a push, man, you're going to have to get stuff timing right. I'm not liking this too much. Against a lot of roaches. I don't think this is going to work out so well. I would much rather disrupt. There's the Hydra Den coming out. Pretty sure we're going to see lurkers, maybe. Damaga going for Burrow. Uh-oh, is he going to get Tunneling Claws, too? Another Evo even going down. It's kind of wild. Good creep spread from Damaga, actually. It's not too shabby. Neither player really building workers too much. Damaga just got some more back after dropping structures. He's got 69 workers, guys. It's officially a nice game. That's all I'm going to say. Another Claws I get ferried in. It's a big army supply from uh, Jalmec, but it's not enough. 95 to 118 still. It's a lot of stalkers. He's going with a plus two timing attack. The Lurker Den and the Hive are going to be the scarier thing after. You definitely need Disruptors after that. Now, the thing I find here, if he can get massive damage and he takes a fourth behind it, I think that's the play more than just outright killing him. I just don't see that happening. He might be able to, technically. 
But there's no I, uh, there's no temple archive, etc. But look at how good the roaches are going to be doing. Colossi doing all right, but they're going to get surrounded. He's getting hit on three, four, five sides. It's a full surround from our Zerg. Nice micro at the War Prism. That was going to keep these Colossi alive for a bit longer. The roach is finally going down the one Colossi. Looks like it's in trouble. Oh, nice save with it. More stalkers being warped. And actually, am I wrong? Is the Maga going to be able to breach this? That was a lot of trades and good trades for Protoss. The plus two timing. Very good from Zhao Mech. Still, there's another base for our Zerg player to go down to. Not a lot of drones over here. And that being said, there's no charge, no nothing. It's plus two extended thermal ants blink. All right. Funnily enough, I, it's going to sound crazy, but Ling Bane wouldn't be bad here. In which case, Jamek would need sentries. Oh, the one Roach almost killing the Colossi. I think this other Colossi is going to fall. Barely survives. Plus two is going to finish, but guess what? Jamek takes the manga down in our first game. Pretty crazy stuff. Pretty crazy stuff. Giddy up. Uh, thank you for the follow. Willower? Uh, seven. Thank you, thank you. For following this boomer. All right, guys, give me a minute. We're going to go into game two. I can do it sooner or not. Uh, there's a little bit more to it than just that. It wasn't army comp and stuff. It was the time. That was a really good... A really good timing attack by... Uh, Zhao Mech. I think Damaga could have won with it too, but... I mean, that, that army comp, a lot of people will die to stuff like that, but you had a good timing. It's, sometimes it's all about timing attacks and getting your build down and obviously microing well. He had some really good, really good stuff going on. All right, we're going to go into game number two. All right. That was just the timing of the push. He couldn't really get into attack. That's the answer why. Anyway, spotting in the upper right-hand corner of Solaris in the blue. And representing Blazer, it is Jaumek, our blue Polish Protoss. His opponent in the bottom left, my Berserker brother from Berserker Esports. In the red, give it up for Demaga who is not going to go down too easily in game two, I have a feeling. Maga is a really good player as well. The Maga, what's he doing? Oh, buddy. Nope, he's just checking. I was hoping we were going to get a proxy hatch, but we're not going to. How you doing, DJ Jaren? I was really truthfully hoping we would get that, but we do not. Welcome, welcome. Alrighty. Hello, Mr. Slockeroo. I didn't realize how many people gamble on my games. I to partake none in game. It's illegal for me to do so, but I thought it was pretty funny. I've, I found that out from my Twitch statistics, by the way. Some of you guys be doing some gambler. I, can, I neither can endorse nor whatever it, but you know. Alrighty, here we go. Actually finishing up. Just the standard opener from both of them again. Is this going to be Stargate? My guess is probably. Standard opener for Protoss. Yalmec might pull out a Twilight build. I'm hoping we get a little change of pace here. Kind of hoping Demaga does something kind of spicy here. Honestly. Sibba John, Bibba Bomb, what's up? 
All right, as we get into it. Let's see what happens. Ling a ling lings. Get chased on the probe. Xiaomek lost it the last time. He's not really looking for the third. It's just, I don't, know, I don't really like when people do this as much. Like, you have an opportunity. If you're not going to scout with it, you might as well have an extra probe, mate. Slip a bob. Yeah, that's it. Slip a SpongeBob. Adept is going to be able to chase these the way the probe lives to see another day. Will the adept go down is the question. Maga not building anymore. Oh, look at that. Acceleration zone. Bam! Gets one wing. Doesn't want to get too greedy. Injures another, but that's about it. Mate, you might want to... Why are you walking into the queen? See, even good players make mistakes. Like, Zhao Mech's not too bad of a player at all. When I say that, like... He's not like a six-something K. But he's, he's a pretty good Protoss player. The Maga is an OG... A very good Zerg player. As well. So. I can see Damaga coming back this one. Giving us a game three, I'm hoping. We'll see from here. Another uh, Oracle's coming out. Another one on the way? Question mark? No, maybe. Yes, no, maybe so. Jamek has the money. Does he, um, No, he's not supply blocked. He's not building one. He's getting distracted, renoed here. Oracle still had the pulsar beam activated. Uh oh. All right, a little bit faster. Yeah, he need. I think he sh he got a little uh, distracted by the harass, and he wanted to kill this overlord somehow. That that really delayed the oracle. He would have been well on its way with that chrono boost still going. Gene Sim, how are the kitties? Sibid John, how are the kitties? Adept is gonna shade in. Getting some work. Oh my god. That adept is going down to Kirktown, buddy. Oh no, another adept going down. But you know what? He's going to be able to save the Nexus. Save the pylon, too, for that. Stalker's still in the wall. Another Oracle's coming out. Forge again. This time it's going to be a Roach Warren. I think this is going to be a different kind of setup uh, from Demaga. He may go for a timing attack himself. Uh, unable to get enough pressure there with that amount of links, but he did get a couple of adepts. Realistically, that's he lost the Overlord, but I'd say kind of worth it earlier on. He might hammer on something cheekier. I like the uh, the spores and the queens. He's doing all right, getting some creep spread out, but uh, it's gonna be a, basically the same kind of build as game number one. I have a feeling from uh, Jalmec. He's going to be staying on. I have a sneaky feeling he's going for another Blink Stalker Colossus push on three bases. He went for a plus two timing the last time. A plus two ground weapons, that is. With that being said, two Oracles. Unable to find some damage. But we'll see. Another Robo and Robo. He's going double. Yeah, wow. He went. He actually skipped some things and did it a little different. Yeah, he's 100% going for the same build. The Maga might want to get something a little different. He's opening the same, too, actually, pretty much. It's time without the fast plus one. I don't think this timing's going to work out so well for Demaga from the looks of it, unfortunately. He's on my team. I'm going to have a little bit. Mouse just jumped on your... Uh, jumped on you she wanted your hand that's funny moose that is funny all right the queen's in position for oracles well there's three oracles not a lot of room to get uh damage just yet but still okay he's gonna target flare and hold position killing a queen killing a couple drones and he should get the hell out of there. He's going into the two queens, but does he escape with all the oracles? Just barely gets out with all of them. One with just, well, 10 HP, the other with 12. All right, nice defense in the back, but two Colossi coming. Extended Thermal Lands coming quite later this game. 
Plus two on the way. A little bit different the timings how things played out, but still pretty good for our Protoss player. The Maga's got 21 roaches coming, however. He's got melee and centrifugal hooks. All right, I like the Ling Bane, even though the Colossi are a problem. Uh, especially with the HP nerf to Bane Links. But still, they're going to be really good against the Blink Stalker component of the arm. Ling Bane with upgrades is pretty good. Plus two is going to be really good for Protoss. But if you can just mass the Lings with the uh, roaches, I'd actually rather see like... Roaches, I guess, are all right because the claw side too, but Ravagers with the Ling Bane would probably be a little better. Eight probes going down on the back end of it. Okay, that's going to mess with uh, Zhao Mac a little more this game. All right, this time we are going to see more Ravagers coming. The Maga kind of maxing out. Is that 66 drones? Once we get to 66, we're going to see some serious shit. There's going to be a seriously lot of Roach, Ravager, and Ling Bane is my guess. That being said, how many Colossi are out? Jalmec had his build really tight last one. Um, I think just he did lose a few workers ultimately, but he, he's pretty much set up for the same build. He got a little more damage with his oracles this game. I don't know why he's wasting Pulsar energy on Creep Clearing. I guess it's safe, but it is going to mess with it on that angle. Nonetheless, he's going for his push. This time, it's not as much supply. The Maga going to get separated with the rocks. Some of the creeps here. There's a lot of queens here. All the queens are here. The army down at the uh, ramp near the natural is going to be forced to come up. Oh, my God. That Colossi is so surrounded. is going to go down. Ah. Yeah, I don't know about this time, man. Colossi are going to be enough to scare this away with the plus two, plus two melee on the way for our Zerg. Ay, ay, ay. And this is like an all-in out of Xiaomi. That being said, I wouldn't hate him. He's got two Robo facilities. I really still wouldn't hate him getting a couple disruptors. It's going to be mostly Ling Bane from here for the Zerg. The Maga is losing. Oh, man, he lost a couple Overlords. That's going to be annoying. But he's already maxed anyway. So that could be an issue. All right, that being said, that's a hell of a lot of Banelings. A hell of a lot of everything. Mostly Banes and even 22 more coming in. Look at this. Oh, the Banes going to chase the Colossi are trying to. They're going to debate and go into the Stalkers on the other side. The Queens are off creep. The Banelings getting surrounded a bit. They're going to have to catch something. They are ultimately going to catch a bunch of Colossi. Decent micro from Xiaomek. The trade's going massively in favor of a Zerg player. That was a way better fight. And I think the Ling Bane Ravager decision was a better play. Damaga taking an extremely good fight right there. Two more Colossi. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm thinking Disruptors. Some Disruptors with this would be a little better. I mean, it's, it's a timing attack and push. I almost feel like this fourth base should have came down instead of some of it. Because he, he was... The, the timing wasn't like as crisp as the last one. The army supply for Xiaomek in the last game was so much better than in this one. He, the upgrades matched up, but he just didn't have as much of an army. He was fighting a much greater superior army force with a, less than he had in the previous one. Yeah, I mean, we see, oh, he did. We saw him do it before. But yeah, against the Banelings, exactly to Big Mac. If you got Banelings like that, Sentries definitely wouldn't be a bad idea. And it, otherwise, he did throw away his, uh, his oracles. He lost all three. If he had those oracles, exactly. I think he shouldn't have been clearing creep, as I was saying. And actually just kept them as a fighting component. Colossi doing good work against the Banes, but there's so many. Ultimately, a bunch going to crash into this. War Prism's out of position. There's going to be a full surround on the Colossi. The Colossi trying to take out the Ravagers. They're missed target for it. Well, it's kind of hard. They're, this army's just ju just hop right on top of it. Warp Prism of Siege, that's unlucky. Because he needs that to save the Colossi. Unfortunately for him, he was uh, he was uh, sieged up. Well, in warp in mode, I should say. There's nothing else behind for tech. There's no plus three on the way. There's no charge on the way for our Protoss. He was literally on a three base all in, so he's just going to fix saturation and continue on. But realistically, as the game goes on, you want to get your upgrades. 
you want to get try to tack up a bit. Even on the stand on three bases, I think some of the committal would have been a little better if he... From how he hit, he should have committed a little less on the next push. If you can't find the damage, you got to try to macro out, is my point. Still, if he can get there, he has potential to get a larger army supply. There's that. I just don't like that there's not more upgrades coming. Or banelings coming in. Oop. Well, four banelings are enough to get ten probes, especially when they're not being paid attention to observers out keeping the eye on the army. Not as many banes right now. Twelve are coming in production behind it. The observer, I think, may have saw them before, but they're going to pop right now. Alright, that being said, I really don't like this. It's all... No upgrades. Zero upgrades being added for Protoss when ranged attacks was coming in. The sentries is alright, but he didn't get enough force fields in, mate. And not... They're alright, but like the fact that there's no Ravagers, that helped and made it a little better than it was, but let's look. Six Colossi have fallen in this game. That's crazy. Still, he's trading more efficiently. It ain't Ogre. But it's going to get tougher as we get into range attacks plus two eventually. And a hive. Oh, yeah, yeah. Stalkers and Colossi. Let's see how they can do against this, but feel like our blue Protoss players on a ticking time bomb here. Zerg upgrades coming in. The Hive coming in means Vipers, if nothing else. We didn't see a Hydra doesn't come down or anything, but it also could mean more upgrades. Potentially. Shamek is going to get this hatch, though, which is not bad, but Zerg is getting in position elsewhere, pulling the drones to other bases. Still... He needed to get something. Oh, on the other side of it, it's a roach assault. Aye, aye, aye. He did not need that. Jomek. Telling you, disruptors wouldn't be a bad thing. The roach ravager composition's gotten greater than earlier. Oh, Corrosive Bile is going to take this down. Stalkers, Colossi. Pushing. Oh, my good lord. I don't like this. It, it, it's tough to control some of this stuff or if you're paying attention to the little harassy stuff behind it. This base lost Hello Workers. Uh, Xiaomek at 56. Damag at 58. This is a weird one. This game's a little scrappy. Neither player at, like, a really high worker count. Pretty crazy stuff. All right, plus two's about to finish for Damaga. That's going to help impact the fight a bit for our Zerg player. Xiaomek with a decent army supply, though. Colossi can't go down. The Banelings here are a problem. Still, the Stalkers hold the Colossi. I actually like this Colossi micro back. The Stalkers kind of take in the rest of it. And honestly, Damaga now looking like he's in trouble. Four Colossi still alive. Damaga is going to do the only thing he can do in retreat, but that's... A big hatch to lose at this point in time of the game. Jamek is down on workers. Looks like the MAGA is finding little bits of value on the other side of it, though. Still, Jamek has this army supply lead, which is kind of nice. He's even clearing up creep. He's pushing on the left. All right, more stalkers getting warped into it. Oh, sorry. Jamek with the less workers. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, the four Colossi still standing for now. Corrosive Biles do miss, and oh, wow. GG. Jalmec with a honestly. 
I didn't think that was going to go as well. That's crazy. I was not expecting the MAGA to go down 2-0. That's very well done by Xiao Mech. So what are we looking at now? Four Jumi versus Demi or Nice versus Mana? Well, I mean, it's just... That was a very much, very committed build on three bases. Let's be real. And you don't see it all the time. It is a build, but yeah, he probably just was like, shit. I've not played against this in forever. But uh, I think he had a better response that game in previously but he needed he had the hive if he got into vipers that would have been a better a better situation for sure and here comes a kitty Mitters. I gotta find the scissors for that little piece of clump hanging off the side of your neck. Look at this kitty, guys, before we get into our next series. You guys decide. Nice versus mana. Mitters. Good girl. Good girl. She is tiny. Narmak, yes. It is Mitters Mittens, my cat. Yep, she's a good girl. She is tiny. I know she looks, but she was like, what do you mean tiny? She is absolutely tiny. She just is all hair. It's all fluffy hair, and her claws are stuck in my... Unlike Charlie's big ass talents that rip through my clothing hers just gets stuck and it leads to awkward moments and then she starts scratching me with her other claws it's a bad time she did meow did you hear her a little bit i always wanted to have my cat's meows picked up or charlie's purrs but this mic doesn't seem to pick it up you did I might go back to a condenser mic some streams when I'm like laddering just so you guys it's gonna be more noisy I did it because the fan sounds and stuff uh, but then you can hear my cat sometimes like if Charlie seems all cuddly one time I might be like hang on guys meet my stuff and put on the uh, put on the other stuff you know You know, she gets she gets lumps everywhere. I have to find the brush, but she won't let me she won't let me brush her is the problem. So I actually have to go through and cut out clump. Like it was so painful for her before, but I'm gonna take some time. It always starts in fall that after. You know. And do its thing. Excuse me. The cold that won't quit. Kaido, how you doing, buddy? What's up? What's up? I think we're going to go to Nice versus Mana. I think that, that could be a good one. Mana versus Nice. Liquid Mana. She does lick herself, but it's not enough. She always gets like that, and I, I, I got to get my stuff straightened out here so I can take care of her a bit, you know? Yeah, but it was so bad. Everybody's like, just take her to groom her. I remember I was out of work for a bit in between there. Or, you know, and like... I don't know. Also, I didn't want to shave cat. So over time, it took me like a month, two months. And I carefully cut out all the clumps in her hair. And she finally looked like normal. I'm doing all right, Kato. I'm really tired today. Anyway, spawning in the... Bottom right hand corner of Sight Delta in the blue representing Team Liquid. Give it up for Amada, our Polish Protoss. He's from Taiwan. And I forgot what team. I think he is on a team now. In the red, give it up for Nice. He's going. Looks like we're going for a one gate expand from both or both are a one gate Stargate. 
And this is a banger. Liquid hot manda. Not magma. You like it. Kaido's all excited about it. Kaido, you got that new caster smell about you. You're all excited about everything. I love it. I'm glad to see it. You seem like uh, you're having fun. I was in the middle of something just doing the stream and I was like, bruh. Alright. Here we go. Just a gate core opener from both Zealot forced on two sides. They're both going to harass. I, I just don't like one gate versus one gate, guys. If I see a one gate, I'm going to go three gate robo. If I'm feeling ballsy, I'll four gate. It's just to me, I become a two gate player. Let's just be real. I always used to beats what I was used to before. In the old previous patch when the batteries and void rays were good together. Other than the Princeton, every so often I would one gate expand and try to be defender, but they nerf uh they nerf battery overcharge. <laughs> Thank you, Kaido. But yeah, I've checked out your stuff too. I was lurking in there. Though I don't speak Spanish too all I'm like, dude, you you seemed really good. From what I can understand too, I was like, dude, you're doing a good job. Keep up the good work, man. Keep up the good work. I remember I... Oh, yeah. I'm not going to get off the rail too much. Oh, pile on canceled again. Looks like they're both doing a good job harassing stalkers out, though. This probe's about to be shut down. An adept coming in Stargate. No, I... Wow. Mana actually debating him. He's going to get his Nexus at a decent time. Nexus, actually, it's about the same for the Nexus. Neither one of them with any other tech, just one gateway. What the deuce is going on? But the, Yeah. This is pod racing, guys. It's a Twilight Council wall. The fuck? And a stiff supply block for a nice or Taiwanese Brodoss player. Yeah, for sure. I remember in Jim Rising's chat a couple times, I was trying to talk in Spanish, and everybody's calling me racist. I'm like, nah, man, I'm just trying to learn. I took it in high school, and I'm really bad at it, dude. Because Jim Rising was going to give me Spanish lessons once upon a time. He was almost down for it, and I think I annoyed him too much. Because way back in the day, he was on the team I originally was on. Uh, team Legion, way back when. Good old Jim Rising. Avila was on that team, too, originally, too. Nothing we're going to brag about there. Good night, Sibba John. Yeah, Jim Rising mostly does League. Yeah, I know. He doesn't He doesn't do any StarCraft anymore. It's a shame. I always liked his... I liked his stream. I like his casting. I always was an appreciation. He's a fun guy. I casted a Latin American tournament... Once before, and Jim Rising came to my stream while he was streaming, and he was showing everybody. He's like, we were looking at each other's stream, and he's like, dude, Dave's like my cringe brother. This was a couple years ago. <laughs> all right, what are, what's the part of the one gating? No, it's getting, you're trying to get, it's all about economics, my friend. It's not about the unit comps and some of it. They're going into a robo now, but they're going blink. It's pretty standard PvP play. Oh, he does do ladder still some. Yeah. He pulled a U-Thermal and retired, but he still makes content. But I think Jim Rising still should do content. Maybe it's just... There's not as many uh, Latin American content creators, I'm guessing. Seems like there's a good amount, but... So League probably makes him more money. and I, You can't fault him for that, but if he enjoys it, he enjoys it. I would flame him. But I'd just be joking. Kid Jim, are you talking Kid Jim? Oh, Jim Rising, yeah, he could be a troll, for sure. He's a fun guy. Oh, the two adepts getting the work in. Behind it all. 
Yeah, I got too fanboy on him earlier on. It was my problem. I was like, yeah, bro, I gotta chill. I've had that happen too many times. Made some, uh, now that I know... It's not like I met anybody famous. Oh, anyway. We're talking about the game. I'm just really tired, so I'm sorry, guys. You know how it'd be some days. It's, we had gunshots going off here, and I called the cops the other day. And fucking crazy shit. My cat wake, is woke me up at like 3, 4 in the morning after that. And then today, he woke me up at like 3 in the morning, and then again at like 5 in the morning. Jesus Christ, it's been rough for the sleep schedule for this old man. Alright, it's going to be an immortal for Mana. Charge going down for nice. Nice getting his forge. Does Mana have a forge? No Jordy LaForge for Mana. Actually, he has a later third. Oh, yeah, he just got it finished. All right. Both trying to get some information. Uh, it's not really much on the other side of the map information for Mana. He's playing defensive. He's got an observer out. He's trying to prop posturing around. Nice not really doing as much. I thought he was going to send an observer out or something, but Nice is not really probing as much. Mana kind of getting ahead in the economic game. Yeah. No, the gunshots. I live in the city, so... It wasn't for fun. They found the guy that shot him. It was four. Bam, 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 bam. Uh, outside, my brother heard it. I heard it. He didn't call the cops. He lives upstairs for me and my brother. I'm like, fine, I'll do it. I go, even though you work nights, I have to be up in the morning. I, right when I fall asleep, the police wake me up. So I had to kind of give a statement. Not a long one, just... They were cool, but apparently they apprehended the shooter. I do live in a rough part of town. Not Mana with a nice little pick, but I don't know. Actually, he gets a stalker for it, too. That actually worked out pretty well as long as he doesn't lose the stalkers. And it doesn't look like he is. Mana is the favored player here. Like, don't get me wrong. Nice is pretty good. Nice going into, like, all right, here's a, a server difference, right? Oh, no, nice. You're going to lose your plus one. Mate, you're losing your forge. That's very big. He had a tight build. Charge is finishing up for Mana, too. Oh, and Nice is even going to not be able to get any kills. The recall is too good, but that is rough. This was a timing attack for Nice. He was just going a Mortal Archon charge lot. Mana going for charge, too, but I think he kind of metagained him. And uh, just call he caught him with his pants down. He caught him with his pants down, as simple as it is to say. Still nice. There's a damn lot of charge lots. There's a lot of stalkers for mana. Uh, there's a lot of stalkers for... Uh, or sorry, a lot of zealots for mana as well. It's equal army supply. Only one Archon. There's an immortal... Oh! Mana snipes the war prism. What a catch. Damn, boys and girls. That was a nasty catch by mana. Nice is going to GG. He knows he lost his forge. His timing was off. And honestly, if with a little better defense, I think Nice actually could have had that game. And at least put himself in a good spot. He was unluckily out of position, but didn't have any map vision there when the blink upward uh, happened. You know? All right, let's get into our next game. Game numero dos. Game numero dos indeed. <laughs> All right, here we are. Map two. Here we are on Golden Aura in the upper left hand corner, sporting the blue trunks. He's our Polish heavyweight Protoss. Weighing in at 250 kilograms. It is Mana from Team Liquid. And his opponent in the bottom right. In the red. Give it up for our Taiwanese Protoss player. He's got the red trunks. It is nice. Time? Exclamation mark time. Jian Wolf. Uh, yeah, my commands thing scuffed. I gotta fix it again. Oh, 
What are you looking for on time, my mate? Jian Wolf. Yeah, Scarlet still plays. Scarlet is still a professional Zerg player. She also does a lot of the stuff for the community balance. I think we need to get you into some homework strong. You're, I'm glad you're getting involved in Twitch. But I think sometimes you might want to check for stuff. My local time is Eastern Standard Time. Uh, New York. So my time right now, the actual time for me is 9.52 p.m. I'm in upstate New York. In the United States. New York. All right, little pro progress again. Why are these guys doing two one get? I I don't know. Jean Wolf, that is where I'm from. You're in Florida, nice. Speaking of nice, nice is dropping a pylon. Mata is not done so yet. The zealot's still going. He honestly cancel the zealot. He could get the nexus, but he's not going to. Uh, he went double gas, like. Okay, so he's just going for the Stargate. Zealot is going to chase the probe, but the probe is a little nimbler than a slow Zealot. Wow, what are we doing? Nice. I think he's harassing on the other side. Oh, gets another pot. Look at a beautiful cancel. Wait, was it a kill? Oh, no. Nice lost the pylon. This is now not worth it for him. Nice. This is not the move. Okay, he's going to rally that. That's actually pretty good. He gets the adept out. I don't know if it was scouted. Uh, that's actually unlucky. Quite unlucky right here for Mr. Nice. Oof. Alrighty. Pylon going up for Mono. Looks like he's going for some proxy shenanigans from how this game opened up. Looks like it's going to be either proxy robo or a fourth gate. I think he's going to four gate. Yeah, he's going to four. Wait, why did he kill his own probe? Oh, Nice made a mistake. Nice killed his own probe. Mamma mia. He's going to lose this adept. Too. This is going rough for Nice. He just killed his own probe with his zealot. Or his stalker. I don't understand. Wait, what did he kill his own probe with? He 100% killed his own probe, though. I don't know what that was all about, but that's pretty funny. He unblocked the supply. Eh. Eh. Oh, Oracle's going to find the proxy. Well, that's funny. He pulls it back. He needs a Voider, eh? Even though he's... Oh, my God. Mana's even getting a Nexus. It is a proxy gate. It's a four gate. There's just one star gate and a gateway. And a shield battery with no Nexus. Can he get good worker kills? No, because there's a shield battery. He might be able to get some on the left side. But there's just more versus less. He needed, like, a stasis ward or something. Oh, my God. This one Zealot is going to be... Absolutely pivotal for our blue Protoss player. Oh, yeah, he wanted to unsupply block for the Oracle. Well, the Oracle isn't doing jack shit right now, I can tell you that. As it hits, a stalker. Well, he's out of shield battery energy mostly. He gets seven, eight workers, but it doesn't matter when there's like five stalkers fighting over here with a zealot. GG. Oh, and like that, Mata bullies his way through two games. And that is it for that series. Mana getting the qualification there. So we only have one more on OSC. Only Uno Boss. And what we have coming up is Four Jumi versus Demi. Demi versus Four Jumi. We have the best Indian Zerg player. Against one of the coolest, funniest, trolliest Protoss players and a buddy of mine, Mr. Four Jumi from Germany. All right, guys, give me a minute between these. I'm going to take a little break. Thank you guys for hanging out. I just need a few. This will be the last one. Usually I'd be doing ladder and stuff, but I'm really tired tonight. I think I'm going to take a little break ski tonight after this last series. All right. 
But and that means, well, maybe I could do a little bit more. We'll see. It is 10 o'clock. I'm going to have a little bit more time in there. Where's Gumio from? Korea. Damn, son. <clears throat> you got to... Chat can always help you out, too, but... I can see you gotta understand you're you're a bit of a chatty Kathy and it seems like you need to make friends join discord I'm just teaching you I think you're newer to some of the you're like I'm newer to discord I'm newer to this hey man it takes time we all start some more but I'm just gonna say this here we're pretty easy going but generally speaking when you have like you know tournament matches even I don't usually acknowledge cat chat that much. It's more of the fact that I'm kind of on a fuck it day. But I try to be nice. You can join my Discord and you can talk to people in there. It's a way for you to meet people. It sounds like you need to make friends and learn some things. It seemed like you're... It's, I can see how you'd rub pigs chat the wrong way and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think you need to take the time to learn a little bit more. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm talking to you, Streaming Stronghold. Are you even following my channel, you little bastard? I've talked to you more than anybody in chat, and you're just, like, going a mile a minute. Which is fine, but... I'm still gonna break your balls. I break everybody's balls. Especially Sibba John. You know? You know, you know? But yeah, check it out. All right, guys. I'll be right back. I'm going to take a little break ski.
Hey, who wants to have some fun? Kano, thank you for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. Kano, our French KSL caster. It's right, the Korean StarCraft League even has a French caster. Man. Hope you had a good stream, Kano. All right, Forge Yumi versus Demi. And I think I'm going to call it after that. All right, maybe I'll play a cheeky ladder game or two. We'll see how we're doing, but it seems like people been ebbing and flowing, you know. When I go away, it's a... It's what it be. All right, guys, here we are for Jumi versus Demi. Demi versus for Jumi on game number one. We're on hard lead in the green. Representing Elfin with Tinker Bell, the little fairy. It is for Jumi. Oh, my God, what a memer. His opponent in the upper left from Team Macherino. That's right, Macherino. An organization that gives us codes and all sorts of stuff to help. A centralized place for people to donate money to StarCraft 2 prize pools and other games. It is Demi. And again, guys, I haven't been at, I shout out OSC enough. This is the Online Sports Championship uh, Masters Cup number 148. They ran 148 of them. This is a $600 tournament. Uh, and we are just on qualifiers right here. Yeah, have a good sleep. You have played many games. Good night, Kano. I hope it was fun. Good. You enjoy your sleep. All right. Demi, Demi, Demi. What do we got out of Mr. Demi? Demi's a hell of a nice guy and a really good Zerg player. He's a really crazy Zerg player. He comes up with some spicy builds. Even when he opens macro, the stuff this guy comes up with is wild. W literally one of my favorite Zerg players from a, stra from a strategy standpoint is Demi. And he can be very solid, too. Demi, uh... I've seen him have some incredible wins and some incredible throws. But he's always a top tier performer in content, even if he unfortunately doesn't get the win. For Jumi, also another madman. He's not afraid to two gate cannon rush in like any matchup or come up with crazy shit. Very cheesy. Very funny. A showman. And his uh, banter in chat's usually pretty funny. Quite the good kid, Mr. Jumi is. Ay, ay, ay. All right. Oof. It's going to be a stalker opener. Stalker and a robo for Forge. I mean, this is, this is kind of interesting. It's going robo first. I wonder what the madman is up to. 
He's for Jumi Potter. The guy looks like a German Harry Potter. By the way, too. The memes are funny. With the glasses and everything else, it's pretty... It, it's, he's got... He's a meme lord. So... Between the two of these guys, I think we're in for something wild. Double Robo! That's just a way to die to Mutas. That's so fucked. What, me trolling for Jumi, Bad Manor? What up, buddy? How you doing, Bad Manor? Hope you're having a lovely day. Like, literally, he has Harry Potter memes on it on his fucking Twitch. I'm not just be I'm not being a dick. Jumi's my boy. Well, you gotta be ADD or not. You could probably watch it. You just gotta learn how to cope with it. Deal with it. I got my own shit. We all got our shit. And everybody, 90% of my chat that comes even in a semi-regular interval is kind of fucked in the head. Bad Banner is here. He can... Bad Banner, you know damn well I'm right there about that. This place, this stream is fucked. I have to behave more for ESL. This is OSC. I should be... A little more professional, but it, guys, I, I work like all you, most of you, whatever. I'm old and quite frankly, when I have a chance to, I just want to chill out and I can give two flying fucks. It's all about the fun. And it's all about the pain and suffering on ladder. For Jimmy going for another war prism and speed. This is like taking Nina memes of old and going next level. Look at this shit. How are you guys seeing this? OG Big Rick? Yep. Two minutes are red. <laughs> is it going to be over by then? Perhaps. Perhaps. It's what I do. Unapologetically. I run my ads how I run my ads. I used to get a bunch of subs and shit, and I don't anymore. Someone give me a sub. Yeah, somebody give o OG Big Rick a sub, all right? Actually, I'm kind of low on subs this month. I would appreciate that. You don't have to, but if you were thinking of it, OG Big Rick asked about it. Just a suggestion. If anybody's feeling high on the shrimp train, the simp train. Wow, <laughs> two disruptors coming in. Two more coming on the other flank. But a lot of lings. And guess what? Demi knows what's up. He's going for that spire. For Jumi's going into Colossi. He's trying to go for a timing, but I don't think he's going to be able to find as much. I don't really like these meme games. Because you can, you can just get build order countered very hard by the Zerg. Wait, did he cancel the spire? He canceled the spire. Or am I so safe? Yo, the Andalorian, what a madman. Oh, big Rick just subscribed. Aw, oh, thank you so much, the Andalorian. For gifting him a sub. What a nice guy. Dude, I wasn't like forced in your hand, but I really appreciate that. And OG Big Rick apparently appreciates that. Oh my god, the disruptor! Comes in, cleans it up. We have uh, no damage on this disruptor. This one just took shields. GG. Four Juby won that. You weren't kidding about how short that was. It was Jedi mind tricks. Jedi mind tricks that you can learn. Hey, Dave, where'd you learn this build from? The Andalorian the OP. University. Now you can spam the pog squirrels, guys. You can spam. I gotta change, update that. I still have the Christmas one from last year. I never updated my art. I never make time for it. Now you can spam the pog squirrels. The DTs. Am I? Or am I so sane that you OG just Big Rick, what are you saying? You just gifted Drive a Kong sub? Just subscribed. Your mama just faced you right? You gifted a sub. Maybe the Andalorian didn't have one. <laughs> you guys are too base, but you just said you didn't have money. Mate, if you don't have money... Dude, 
Dude, that's... OG Big Rick, are you the old... Is this another account of the old streamer? I feel like if not, you're the guy I know on ladder. I know I know you from Twitch, but I just... I'm trying to place. So you're not the... YouTube guy, right? Because I gotten drunk and got into... Calm and a smurf and stuff. That is you? Yeah, I was just really drunk that time, man. You know, I, I'm remembering that. I was going through some shit. But you're pretty based. All right, guys, you want to see game two? Yeah. The first time I played you was funny as shit, though. And you made that YouTube video. <laughs> that shit was fun. You don't like my disruptors? I still use disruptors. I got really good at disruptors, and then they nerfed disruptors. It's not like I go to cheese them. It's just like... You have to... I hate to say it, but it's literally like the Protoss. Is, what did Protoss use in the past? It'd be like, alright, we could use DTs and... Things after, but like now it's just like... Oh yeah, it's. I mean, that's the thing. They, they make the game... Dice rolly for sure. You know? Anyway. So I was just making sure OG Bick Rick. And if you're still doing stuff, you should post your shit in my Discord. Benefits of being a sub? Well, other than the silly emotes, and sometimes you're supporting the streamer. Number two. You don't get the ads. I run a lot of ads on my stuff. You're playing too much World of Warcraft, though. God help you. I never got into that shit. I tried, but... Yeah. I actually watch enough Twitch. I actually got Twitch Turbo. And I'm not going to start cutting my subs individually because I've spent so much money on subs that I actually need to look out for myself a little bit. I've spent so much money in this fucking game. Just in which goes the community. And you guys have spent a lot of money on me, I guess, cumulatively. But by no means am I asking, you know, if you don't have money, don't do it. I run a lot of ads because, quite frankly, as long as I'm doing okay, we got a few viewers, and I know it's like the Catch-22, I made it about as far as I'm going to make it in this shit. Let's be real. If I got lucky, something would happen in, in Stormgate and Zero Space or whatever. Or something else or real. Hell, maybe I become an IRL streamer with fucking weird, funny Dave shit. The reality is. And I'd still do all my normal stuff. The reality is. I run so many ads at those predetermined times because Twitch pays me more money for it. I didn't even see it yet. I'm going to have to review it. I'm going to have to review it myself. I can, you know what I mean? I'm in the Frost Giant stuff. I won't get in trouble, but I'm, I'm going to make sure I can actually do it too first. You know? But anyway, let's go into game number two. Some random dude said this kind of means that for being I run at that kind. Why well, just use this emote instead of, ha? Uh, mm, that those are diff. Those are universe global emotes. So it doesn't matter. Anyway, up a point with a weird, Mimi build spawning in the upper right hand corner of Solaris in the green, with the little fairy. It is for Jumi. And his opponent in the bottom left from Maturino in the red. It is Demi. Another PVZ for you. Is this going to be it? Or are we going to get a game three? Are we going to get a reverse sweep for Demi? And guys, the OSC Masters Cup will continue. I can give you some more information after this. Who even run a close couple closed tournaments?
It's not big profit. I don't make a lot of money, mate, from Twitch. I do enough streaming, and I've done this for a long time, that I think I deserve to make a few bucks, because that money usually goes back in... Let's be honest. Basically, the money I get in Twitch goes back into StarCraft. And it's helping the community with tournaments. It has. I'm finally actually like, all right, I'll, I'll flow money for this or that. I started streaming. I got affiliate three years ago, but on my channel, I tech started about three and a half, almost four years ago, but I was streaming more on my old team's Twitch. The statistics are actually wrong on Twitch, but I uh, stream for nobody and like one person. Uh, otherwise, for a long, for quite a while, it seemed like. But I did a lot for the community. Um, I used to do a ton of clan wars. I've done Vulcan Cup forever, which actually now Roddy's casting Vulcan Cup. So that's a bit about me. Let's talk about the game. Exactly, that's kind of where it's at, but the thing is, it's... I would say do Twitch for fun for anybody, and you just see where it goes. I have got to a point where I was full-time streaming and people were helping me, but it was more like helping me while I was going through some stuff and people support my channel, but I could not make a living on this. I mean, I've been paid for Raid Shadow Legends and this and that, and I, I wouldn't even say I'm a very... I'm just a dude, you know what I'm saying, man? I think that's how people got to look at it, is realistically, more often than not, for what it is. Because I know a lot of people go in there like, yo, dude, I'm going to make a living making video games. Uh, play, you know, you have to be, like, really good at games. You you have to be, you know. I mean, I always had a legitimate full-time job. I was going through a rough patch to Big Mac, which I don't think you realized, too. When you were starting shit, you didn't really talk to me. I was going to talk to you a bit about that. But I was going through a really rough time, man. So when you were getting banned, too, and some of the shit you were saying, I'm like, dude, you can't really shit on me, man. Like, I, you know, you were being a dick to me, too, on top of the other stuff. I'm like, yeah, I see your point, but you got to hear me out, man. Shouldn't, like, also, you're not streaming, so you can kind of bark at the moon and eat shit sometimes, too. Oh, Demi coming in very aggressively here. Demi with the cheese, but guess what? The Oracle is out. I mean, that's me, the Big Mac. How is that not me? I wanted, I mean, if I'd be lying if I didn't say I enjoyed doing this and I wish something happened, but like, you gotta pay the bills, <laughs> you know? I would be out, outright lying to you. Anyway, that is not the case. I accept reality. I think it's possible um, because I also have a business. I think it is possible with me doing a few things, and that was my goal. And I hope one day, if nothing else, if I don't end up in a better job, I can meet those goals. Anyway, this is a tournament. Why am I talking about this shit? You do it for... Why would you do that, Kaido? You better... You, even if you... You can stream full-time and have a job, but, like, you need to make the best of your life is my option. And for me, I need to fix health habits and stuff, too. I'm going to have to cut down. And I've noticed sometimes I am, but I've still been grinding full time. I stream full time and I work full time in what I'd consider a professional job. But even if not, I'd be working in what, you know, if I didn't, what would I be doing around here? Hard labor. Stuff nobody wants to do otherwise, you know. <laughs> like, basically, I already do stuff nobody wants to do. You didn't use the battery? Sometimes at the bus stop, I do things for only one viewer. That's fucking hilarious. But, like, I trust me, over time, I learned a lot. And I can give some good advice to a lot of people, I think. Because I think people get carried away and... 
don't realize the reality of the situation, especially for StarCraft. Like, there's no money to be made in this game, really. Like, real money. I'm just being honest. It's somebody that loves the shit out of the... It'd be few and far between to love this. Oh my god, four Jimmy's getting the work done. See, why I'm talking instead of casting is because all this cool shit's going on and I'm catching it. I'm catching it, but I'm just not talking at all about it. I'm kind of like Jerry Seinfeld of fucking StarCraft 2 right now. What's the deal with airplane tickets? Oh, by the way, that Oracle got nine kills. Yeah, free time in a gaming? Absolutely. But I would say balance. And I, once I start balancing, I will suggest everybody else does. is probably one of the most burnt out motherfuckers you'll meet. Foracles. Oh my god. Four Jumis actually. He might clean this up. But he lost 12 probes in a gate. Same time, Demi was pretty committed. Demi's still at. Demi's actually playing this pretty well, though. He doesn't have any creep spread for shit. Well, in, in the right directions to connect his bases. But Demi manages to get a fourth base. Demi's drone count's decent. Tech wise, he's beyond. Uh, four Jumis actually set up for a pretty good. I digress. I don't think Demi, Demi's immediately dead, but he has to do like. He has to make like few mistakes from here and get some lucky catches. I'm not going to lie and say that Demi's. And just like fantastically, you know, great hold. Nah, I've been yapping. I've been not talking about the game, and I apologize for that. That means you got putting link progression on and stuff's a good idea. I like how Forjumi's splitting his oracles up. He's going to check this out. But he needs to have enough units in. There's two shield batteries. Oh, an immortal and a stalker. I know it's. Eh. Charge is about to finish. Stasis ward's pretty nice. Is Demi going to take the bait? Zealots are slow for now, but they're about to be fast. Plus one eventually coming. Demi with 12 roaches coming. The Oracle is going to do a good job of scaring the lings away. Because Demi wants to keep them alive. Or Jumi knows he has this. The Oracle is all... Oh, dude, Jumi's playing. Honestly, he's done very well, the Oracles. He lost one, but I think it's safe to say he's got their value. Or, well, some of the their value he only yeah he only lost one oracle actually really good trades freak show of cork see that's crazy i was wait who's talking about being a dick wow uh guys screaming stronghold in chat taking everything i say personally about him i was talking about the big mac the Big Mac said something. He's been banned from my streams more times than fucking... Oh, look at the stasis ward catching the links. Well, not enough of them. It would have been nicer to catch some of the roaches, let's be real, but still. Battery overcharge is activated. The Archons aren't done. Demi might just be of his window of attack here. It's a big army supply. The Oracle's raining down. The Archons finished, though. And I don't know, Demi. Pumping a lot of the uh, army supply had shown down here that 70s on the other side of the map. GG's called. Oh my god. Another 2 0, -oh, another queen sweep. And that is that, guys. Jesus Murphy. And this is the OSC Masters Cup. Guys, I'm going to help them out too. They helped me out. They got me into this. Yeah, I'm putting some money yet too, but think of it is. Am I? It's a rough or day. Fresh so coffee, guy. That you just blew your mind. Thanks, Flavor Flav. Coffee pot just subscribe. Thank you, Fresh Thanks, Coffee Flavor Pot. Dave for casting. Thanks for the four months, mate. All right. So anyway, do you want a little bit of ladder? Do you guys are you guys cool with me going? Just wondering.
Um, yeah. I'm too. Yeah, I trust me. I'm aware of what I shouldn't be doing during casting a tournament. But I'm seeing somebody that seems nice enough that probably can use some help. Whatever's live your best life. Living my best life would be fuck ladder, dude. Let's be honest, guys. Like, who who wants the 